Someone mentioned us. Hey, Hello. Mom. We're here <laughs> for another open bar. It's no, number 18 now, damn. We're, we're yeah, and we're trying to be all lively and happy and fiery, even though Kenobi just finished, which is like, uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll, oh. we'll try and keep the positivity going as long as possible before we yeah. start talking about Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> Good show. But yeah, uh, we've, we've got a, a hell of a lineup tonight, actually. It's, uh, it's a packed one, so should we start bringing people in? I think so. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. First guest is Gary Nerdrotic. Hey, man. Hello. Hey. I'm awake. I'm ready. Yeah. We're being positive right now. It's the nerd guy. It's yeah. the nerd. <laughs> it's the guy with the beard. Man. Yeah. The bad man. Uh, hey, guys. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. I can't wait to talk about Kenobi again. Like I haven't been talking about it all morning. Dude, that's that's all, all of us. Video. All of us. <laughs> like, it's it's like week we all talk about it. I covered it on EFAP last night. We're doing it tonight here, and then I'm gonna. I'm sure we'll cover it again on Friday night. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, definitely. But oh, I've, I've been like between going on Kenobi, I've been kind of poking at Marvel stands too. Like as has his angle. Like he was going after, I guess, uh, Jane Foster's arms, and I was just calling <laughs> Miles Morales, Miles Morales again. It's been fun. It's been lots. I, I love that tweet from you, man. <laughs> what if Miles Morales was <laughs> Spider Man? <laughs> <laughs> They're so easy. It's just it's like poking a dumb kid over and over. I thought again. it was a meme, by the way. The whole like, yeah, Chris Hemsworth has dots on his arms too, so they're also fake. It's just like, are you? <laughs> so you think it's okay? All they right, do. that's fine. They do. They do. They really wow. tried that. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, with you great guys. to have you, man. Um, we'll, we'll bring in our next guest. We've got oh, Disparu, oh, you, you sir. Um, this is your second visit to the open bar, so welcome it back. Is. Man. Both for during Obi Wan Kenobi's run. Hey, and you want positive? I have to say, this finale, I have never laughed so much in a TV show. I thought it was absolutely hilarious when he <laughs> sees visions of Leia and then suddenly powers up and blasts oh. the rocks into the sky. I was wetting myself. Oh, we've so uh, I think the key to all of this is uh, once you write it off as this isn't good, this isn't Star Wars, you can actually begin to enjoy the uh, the comedy of it all. And I still think somebody who was writing the show wanted it to be a parody. There's, there's too many moments in it which are so far off. For it not to have just been a joke. Yeah, I, mean, I enjoyed the coping from it. Good, good fun with too. it if you put a laughter track on top of it. <laughs> we was um we were saying about how like there's different sort of arguments that get made by different people who just are in love with this no matter what. And so, for example, with the Grand Inquisitor, they were like, Oh, his species have two stomachs, makes sense, he survived the stab. And then Reva got stabbed twice, and they're like, Okay, uh <laughs> well <laughs> I can explain Everything this. Everything I saw from people that liked the show was, here's a screenshot of the show, here's a screenshot of another movie in Star Wars, they're the same, isn't it yeah. amazing? And I'm like, no, no, I need yeah. more than that. You can't just bring back an actor and expect me to enjoy the show. That's not how it works. Oh, yeah, God, we have to, yeah. The keys that we're certain... in front of you. Um, anyway, we've got our final guest for this evening, and we've got uh, Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers, man. It's been a while since you've been on. Welcome back. And how's it going? Hey. Really, really excited to talk about Riva. I mean, Kenobi. Um, it's a really awesome series, and uh, Bob <laughs> Iger is pointing a gun at me. So it's a great series. Everything's wonderful. The writing is perfect, and the representation is important, and I'm really happy. No, thank you for having me. Great to be on with Disparu my my geeks and gamers brother it's gonna make this Bruce <laughs> crushing i can't i genuinely can't wait for his review that's the that, that's why i'm so upset because there's no more disparu reviews for kenobi that to look forward <laughs> oh, to there'll They're always so be more good. trash to review yeah, yeah, so, dude, we might get a season two <laughs> yeah, I know. Just wait. <laughs> no way am uh, i all yours. Uh -uh. <laughs> i'm done after this also uh, nice to meet you uh should i call you cobra is that how Co you was that yeah is that what you that, go by it that works that works uh I, I would say I, just racist it, mm -hmm. well, no that's not that's, ryan's not here gary okay ryan's well, not you here know, you taught him everything he knows so. <laughs> that is very true uh, i can't get away from gary lately uh i, can't, I know dude everywhere i go 
I see his face. <laughs> <laughs> <to> have that <laughs> meme. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but it's it's an honor to be here. So uh, I'm ready to talk about this uh, garbage, garbage known as Kenobi. My goodness, it's terrible. Yeah, I mean, let's just well, I guess let's just launch into it. Wait, we should start with the positive actually, because we'll keep no. the positive vibe going. What was your favorite moment of the finale? What was your favorite? Ep- I do have a legit answer for that that you're aware of, Drinker. I think because you were there. I think when, so, yeah, yeah, like an actual thing that I thought was good that was in the episode. And to be fair, it's tiny, but it was there. In fact, I, you know what? I'm going to do it. I want to say there's two things. The event itself of someone like a guy like Uncle Owen actually trying to fight a Sith with a stick. I had a moment of just like, you know, that's, that's pretty chattish. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> just It's a stupid scenario, right? Like how it all came together. But just, just noting that in a meta way. It's like, this is just a guy, and he's fighting someone who has magical powers and a sword made of light that can cut through anything. And he was like, nah, fuck you. I'm going to fight you. Like, that's pretty cool. Um, and then the other thing was when she says, like, you know, why do you care so much? He's not even your kid or whatever. And then he's like, he is my own. And I was like, that's nice. I like that, too. That was it, though. I, I can't <laughs> that was it, though. <laughs> I can't believe they portrayed a, a father figure in a positive light. I'm shocked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I heard that. I heard that. I, well, it, it's I, sandwiched I, on either end, though. Because at first, it's got the wife who's like, no, we're doing this plan. You're not allowed yeah. to run off. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. as he gets defeated, he screams out, she's coming in now. But they've set up a trap in the next room <laughs> yeah. with the hidden person. Well, so now she knows it's a trap. I was going to say, that's it for the positive for me tonight. That is absolutely it. <laughs> yeah, I <can> rage. <laughs> I would say, well, I won't, I won't go next, actually. Gary, what about you? Did you have any any positive takeaways from this? Uh, it was funny. We were just talking about that. It, it is hilarious, hilariously bad. Uh, but yet we, ju- we just talked about my favorite scene was when Owen and Baru were yelling Luke's name, and then Obi-Wan comes, in, comes back just in time to completely fail at his one job and ask them, is the boy gone? It's like, no, we're just... He's actually inside. We're outside, just yelling his yeah. name for fun. Just yelling his name like <laughs> he's a, like he's a, like he's a dog that got off the leash. You yeah. know, like, <laughs> just, just... Luke, come on, boy, come on. Yeah. <laughs> it was so bad. That was so bad. I mean, that's just an extension um, of how stupid the plan was. When they told him, if anything fails, just run. I was like, seriously, he's like a ten year old, and you just like just run, just go somewhere. Yeah. Hey, Luke, remember when that crazy lady chased you with the lightsaber? <laughs> Yeah, I thought this yes. was the planet, like it was oh, the man. furthest from uh, the bright yeah. center of the universe. Yeah, well, he's so familiarity like, with the force now too, huh? He was, uh, he was hit over with it. Mm. Yeah, people were like, "Well, he was unconscious when the lightsaber came out." Yeah, uh-huh. but he was force pulled off a mountain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Has, and point, when he actually. was climbing through the ladder, she was in the room with her lightsaber, so he could have looked back. We didn't see the cut, but like the the thing that he, well, oh, he just didn't see the lightsaber. Bullshit. Well, even that entire experience, like what when all I was, the damage. You know, when I was like nine or ten years old, I had a, a like I was playing with my action figures. I had a cement block that was outside, and it fell and crushed my finger. Okay, that was I, I've never forgotten that moment. If if my home is being invaded by a freaking force user, and I have to run into the mountains. I'm gonna remember that. That's a hey, traumatic yeah, yeah. experience. And yeah, why has it gotta be the black that. woman home invading? Why you know? Come yeah. on, you know what? <laughs> even you could even ignore that. I would say I would remember if in my town that was adjacent to my house there was a crazy lady who cut off a woman's hand with a light sword thing. I'd be like, how do we? <laughs> did anyone talk about that to Luke? Like, I guess not. Yeah. Did it, you see it's... how far he ran across the desert when it go when she's bringing him yeah. back and, cuts, and the mountains are just about visible in the distance? What is it with all these little kids that can run like the Flash? It's incredible. I, I, I hate, and I know in this case it's kind of the the nature of the landscape. Like he, his moisture farm is out in the middle of nowhere, and it's just flat desert around it. But there's so many of these scenes that just take place. And I was saying this to you last night, more just in the most boring flat uninteresting landscape like a fight scene that's like it could be on like gantries and and multiple levels and platforms with like deadly drops on either side all kinds of interesting things you could do but it's like no it's just on flat ground oh you know how they make it more exciting you know how they make it more exciting drinker by turning down the brightness and cranking up the contrast so we can't see shit it's great yeah i genuinely unless you're sitting in a pitch black room yeah, with, that's... With everything turned up to maximum. You're going to see jack shit in this. Dude. It's um, it's funny you bring that up as well because like just before we started, that's why I've been editing is proving your points with visuals in this EFAP. It's like 
<laughs> yep, basically every fight in, in Disney Star Wars, it's, it's all been flat landscapes with really lame choreography. And it's just kind of like, man, you think about Bespin, whoa, what a fight. Whoa. Right. Hey, Ellie, uh, you guys, you guys like that Empire movie film, movie right? Movie. Empire, yeah, comes back, or whatever good. it's called. Yeah, it's pretty good. Just a decent film. As far it's as decent. the positives go, uh, I, I am a pre, I'm a longtime prequel defender. It's obviously great seeing Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor back. They, they definitely have chemistry. They do, even with all the horrifically bad writing and the just boneheaded decisions going on with the show. There are moments there where you can see these guys actually do have real chemistry and. So I, I enjoyed seeing those small moments intertwined in this disaster known as Kenobi. Yeah. Um, does, does Baru, did you have anything? Uh, for me, it'd be when Obi-Wan's taking Darth Vader apart bit by bit. And so he, he breaks his guard and then he like slashes him across the back and then he starts hitting his chest and stuff. I like that. And then it's immediately ruined when he doesn't kill him. It's like this is like the most evil man in the universe. And you're now responsible by just leaving him to live for everything uh. he does in the future. You are complicit with all of his actions. And no, they didn't think that was wrong. This is what gets me a lot of the time. It's like the writers think that's a moral and good choice. I'm like, what are you doing? No, I said it yesterday. Like Disney needs to hire a human being to human for them while they're in the writing room because they don't know the moral right and wrong thing at all. They're like, is it bad if he oh, let him go yeah. and was responsible for the death of mil billions of people? And the human would go, yes, that's bad. <laughs> don't write that. Also, uh, you, <laughs> you like the... Um... The panel breaking from the hill of the lightsaber? I thought that was lame. Um, I like action stuff, and out of all of the action things in this, that's like the best bit of the entire fight, because I thought the rest was awful. The, the, the rest of their fight felt like two guys that had had a few pints that were just fighting with lightsabers in the back garden. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was really bad. That shaky cam, all from like the ground angle, constantly moving, and, and uh, a co well, a couple of people who know, the shake might have been done in post- like it wasn't an actual shaky cam. It's a it's post got that, shaky it's got that cam. fake look about it, man. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. It. Yeah, it's too smooth or something. Yeah, I didn't like anything about the fighting. I thought it was all crap. And you know, like the choreography Vader, was bad. Is Vader oh, Superman yeah. now? Can he just can rocks break on him? <laughs> we, we were like, wait, was, was there a the cave thing? there? And that's what he just or did he just like literally take a chunk out of the planet? Like what just happened? I think he I, did. I, well, there must have been something to collapse, but then when Obi-Wan just you know throws three yeah. tons of rocks at him, they break on him. It's like, okay, well, maybe they're hitting him in the metal bits in some places, but from, like this, from this the overhead the view, it looked like the rocks were breaking like a foot in front of him. So I thought, oh, he's using the force to kind of protect him. And then it shows the side angle and it's just breaking on his elbow. It's so yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. Ah, I don't either. Uh, this Bruce video, he pointed it out. <laughs> Vader shows up and goes, have you come to destroy me? Like, yeah. You, you <laughs> came to hit us. line ever. Yeah. You, came you come out as just a stalker in your front room. It's like, can, please, can we stop doing this? I'm getting bored. Yeah, you have uh, moments where like one person out of five will notice something really dumb, and the other people will like laugh. But uh, we had uh, like six people watching this, and when he said that line, all six of us started complaining about the exact same. They're like, "How the fuck do you fuck that up so badly that you make him say that?" Yeah, that that honestly felt like it was written for a different screenplay like yeah. Was a yeah story and they filmed a different scene and they were just like ah fuck it we've reworked it we'll just leave this in because it's like yeah it doesn't make sense in context in the slightest um i, I guarantee you as well when obi-wan's in that crater and darth vader walks over to the edge and looks at him i guarantee at some point they were written i have the high ground now yeah. and they couldn't i thought we even we can't get away with that, that yeah. that's yeah. way too much <laughs> I, I, I was going to say as well, I think the bit that made me laugh the most was when Qui-Gon shows up right at the end. Because uh -huh. we were all <laughs> expecting, and we, we talked about this last night, like he's going to show up at that crucial moment when all seems lost and Obi-Wan is, is fucked and he needs like that pep talk to get him back in the fight. And it's like, it doesn't happen. He just sees little flashes of Leia for some reason and then like a tiny little glimpse of Luke because that's the only footage they had of him watching him. Um, and that that gives them the the energy to go on, and then right at the the end, in the final minute of the episode, he's just walking through the desert, and there's Qui Gon Jinn. <laughs> <laughs> You've got Liam Neeson there. You've got Liam Neeson back playing Qui Gon Jinn, and he's just like, ah, hey, what's to, what's to, what took you so long? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was so casual. <laughs> going, like, like, hey, what's up, bro? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, yeah, and, and waste he's of like, where, where the fuck have you been all this time? And he gives him just that shitty line that it's literally the only thing you can say in that situation where he just goes, oh, I was here the whole time. You just weren't ready to see me. 
Like, oh, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> we were saying, man, there was, there was a scene that was like purpose built perfectly for this when he's in the ship and he's deciding if he'll leave to fight Vader or if he'll stay. It's like, that's where you drop in Qui Gon. He's alone in the ship. Qui Gon gives yeah. him the pep talk. Perfect. But no, yeah. he just comes into the end to say, come on, Obi, let's go. Up, yeah, bro? because because what? it's hard. Yeah, because I cannot like I can't sit there and buy in that moment that Kenobi, after being out of touch with everything for so long, can stand toe to toe with Vader at that point in his life. But if but if Qui Gon shows up before that fight to like you know give him motivation and pe then it's like okay, I can see where he found it. You know what I mean? But to see Vader get beat down like that. You know, it's just it doesn't work. It, it doesn't, doesn't help work. at all. And and like when you look at this whole entire series, like Co Kenobi completely fails at everything. He needs uh, he needs help. It took Riva not doing something for him not to completely fail at his job. He should have never. Leia should have never been in this. He should have never fought Darth Vader twice, once, much less twice. There could have been like a parallel character study, good story in there somewhere. Uh, but Disney wasn't going to find it. And then all the filler, like this whole ep, like you notice we're not talking about the first 15 minutes, right? Because it's just <laughs> people staring at each other and freaking like getting up from chairs that flop around. I know Chris Gore pointed that out and I'm like, oh, that's bad. Like Kenobi gets up from his chair in the ship and it goes bling, 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 bling. like it's like, <laughs> prop. and it's like, whoa, that's horrible. Uh, yeah. And then like 15 minutes in, like. Darth Vader finally shows up on not Tatooine, whatever the fuck it was, and uh, they fight in the dark. And, and, and nothing happens for 15 minutes. And don't get me started on how they ripped off their own show with <laughs> Rebels. Yeah. My God. Oh, like, that is great. That I, could like that could have been like a that. really cool moment, but like the fact they they just moved it to the other side of his mask, and it's like how many times is this? Dude, I've seen people crazy for that. It's like it's oh. referencing rebels. It represents no. the two halves that attempted no. to find Anakin no. when no. Luke was the one that was able to unmask him completely. Uh, I think it was so As. Cool. Somebody called that <laughs> before. It, right? like, I'm sure multiple people did, but like As called that before it happened on Friday Night Tights. He said they're probably yep. going to do that same mm -hmm. thing. I, and I knew about this because someone who worked on the, the fight scenes for for that final episode, they, they emailed me and told me. And I didn't believe it because it was so hokey. I was like, nah, they, they surely won't. And yep, sure enough, there it was. Well, I just, I didn't believe that Vader could be beaten by Obi-Wan with how everything had been set in this season. But then they gave him that anime moment and I was like, oh, I guess he's, uh, he's really powerful now. Okay. Yeah, it was the, the CW. Problem with all this, like, yeah, you know, when he, he picks up all these boulders and starts hurling them at Darth Vader, like, okay, you've established that he could do that now. Like, why wouldn't he have done that in Episode Four? You know, he could like, like rip pieces off the walls of the Death Star and like throw them at, at Darth Vader. Like, it, obviously, he doesn't do any of that stuff now. So, like, why has he given up doing all of this this four stuff? You, you can't you can't mess around with their power power levels like this. Oh yeah, they're just cranking them up. Vader's proved now that he can stop a ship flying away. Yeah, he's in a ship chasing another <laughs> ship and doesn't even try and stop it. Instead, yeah, he just misses it. it. And is it, it like he misses it so often? He's like, increase the firepower. You're just gonna miss even more. Even what is even, even the point? point? He he does does all the time. Fighters, you know how can like, he? How can he hold a, sh a ship that size thrusting away from him, but he can't deal with rocks? I don't understand. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's oh, dude, thing. watch Invader go like, ooh, how chew, wowie. I was just like, no, <laughs> stop, 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 stop. This is mm -hmm. dumb. Yeah, this this did this did more damage to Vader than the priest did. did. <laughs> it really did. <laughs> well, by the way, uh, not saying something. Yeah, I mean, someone like uh, I am also a prequel enjoyer. <laughs> I, I have been known to to partake. Um, having Qui Gon, because I'm not kidding about the whole wasted potential thing, as, as Drinker was saying. You needed that moment where Qui-Gon tells Obi-Wan, Anakin isn't your fault. Yes. That's, like, w yeah. why the fuck didn't we see that? That's like the I main know. thing. It, it, it would have been so impactful and powerful, but it's obvious that none of this was meant to complement to complement any Star Wars lore. I mean, it only complicated everything, and, and Kenobi ends up literally in the same place as he was at the end of Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Nothing it's happened. Just Nothing. Yeah. I saw mm -hmm. a comment I, I saying, like, well. I have to talk about space combat a little bit in this because this is like Last Jedi uh, nonsense. Yeah. Like, not only do they never use any of the TIE fighters that they've got on board, I just love that idea of saying to someone, increase firepower. Like, why? Why when you were max anyway? <laughs> 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 with more anyway. shots. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, um, uh, they the fucked themselves the over. They're just like, yeah, well, we were kind of just half-assing it, but since you asked, <laughs> okay. <we're really laughs> they they looks at the talking and... guys like, what are you even doing? Could you hit him, please? In the Ryan room, like they 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 completely screw because they don't address it. Where they they're like, so you got big ship going after small ship. Oh look, someone's ran off. We'll have to go after him. It's like, well, uh, I think even in our recording, we're like, well, just send a ship after Kenobi or fuck it, Vader. You go after Kenobi, and everyone else can go after them. And then Vader's like, no, all of us are going after Kenobi. Like, yeah, okay, <laughs> stupid, but fine. Follows him, and then he's like, now I shall go alone. And it's like, wait, yeah. but, but that just but that you could go. Back that you're way. telling I me know. the I know. Vader making a decision for no reason is why the Rebel <laughs> exactly. Alliance even was born. Like, the hardest part in this review, because I'm not Mahler, is like, what am I going to cover that's stupid? Because I can't cover everything. So, yeah, but after yeah, everyone the Emperor is like, yeah, it's because you, your feelings about Kenobi that you make retarded decisions. That's how that works. I yeah. love how the ship was flying. Like, this is not 1983, and the ship's all like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking bad. I, I, was really that bad. a homage to like the original where it they just make it look I'd groovy. love to think that, uh, <laughs> but it wasn't. That was just regular old Disney Star Wars incompetence that we've gotten used to. Yeah, and then just the, the whole the whole Leia aspect is just so bad <laughs> because again I talked about this like she doesn't care when Kenobi dies in A New Hope. I can explain she, that. She, Okay, so it's all good. They put in a line. He said, "Like, oh, hey, I know we're, how good friends we are, but make sure no one knows about that." Oh, He's like, I "Fuck know. off!" Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> Disney, so Disney, you want to shake that groomer lab label? Be a little less groomy because that was a very <laughs> awkward conversation. That with was the awkward. Ending. Yeah, yeah. Here, little Dude, girl. Here's the candy. Just don't tell don't anyone. Tell anyone. <laughs> they, they've been trying. They, they like this episode is the most embarrassing attempts to be like, "See, you can watch a New Hope and everything is normal." <laughs> I saw a, a comment say like, "Ah, yes." After the final duel, Anakin and Obi Wan, he leaves to hide on Tatooine in order to take care of Luke Skywalker. Wait, which what film am I describing right now? End of Kenobi or Revenge of the Sith? It's like, yeah, exactly. They just <laughs> repeated it all because no. they were like, "Fuck, well, we're gonna get it back in Canada." Kenobi ah. relieves himself from responsibility. He's like, "You got the kid," yeah. and then off, then uh, leaves Tatooine again, and then offers to leave again after that. I, I'm I, like, just, I, I love how he says to to Owen, "It's like you and um, and your wife are like the only protection he needs." After they literally got owned, and, and <laughs> 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 oh, dude, that. That it's drives like me nuts. They're uh, not enough. A full-fledged Sith shows up to their fucking homestead in Tatooine. They need to leave the planet now. It's, it's yeah, compromised. Yes. Oh they no! Have to leave. Well, well, Kenobi letting her live at the end, like because oh like, when, she, when she like chose mercy, I was like, okay, this is the good bit. This is where Kenobi's got to do something dark. He's got to kill her right now. Mm -hmm. Chop that head yeah. off right now. Nope, let's go. Fuck right off. She knows about Luke. She knows about Leia. She knows of Vader. She's she knows about Vader. Vader. She, she knows, knows everything. She She's knows crazy. everything. Yeah. So, yeah, and we don't even know, know who she's told is kind of my point. The characters will never know how safe they are. And yet they're like, yeah, let's just stay. Fuck it. Whatever. And the show acts as if she's been redeemed when she didn't do a good deed. She only stopped doing an evil one. So, uh, yeah. Like Disproof, she saved Disproof. someone from herself. No, Disproof, oh, dude, yeah. her hair was out of place. So that showed character <laughs> development when she returned, okay? The hair out of place showed a lot of character development Dude, um, for Reva. So she's clearly the best of us now. <laughs> so. uh, I just, I drink it. Do you remember um, when we when we were watching it? There's this moment where she looks like she's going... Well, what happens is she reaches for a lightsaber to bring it out. But me, uh, Drinker, and, and the rest of us, we were all watching this moment where she reaches back and I was like, fall over. Fall over, yeah. fall over and die, please fall it, over. It was like, like, come on, 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 come on. Score. It's like, come on. <laughs> and then she pulled the lightsaber out. We're like, no. Bit <laughs> off confirmed. <laughs> but yeah, seriously though, Reva being alive, um, surviving multiple lightsaber attacks, uh, having all of the knowledge of Anakin and Vader for all of this time. Uh, which Vader would have never allowed in any capacity whatsoever, knowing about Luke, knowing about Leia, or being the person that now she's the key to the fact that Luke is still alive because she had the, the heart to not kill him. She is the biggest plot hole in the history of plot holes. Like, this is a disaster. It's a disaster. Well, yeah, you, you know she's that a... they're gonna use her again, though. She's gonna like, she's gonna show up in, in oh. fucking Mandalorian or something. No, and yes, she's gonna her own show. She's so absolutely she her own show, and Darth Vader will be in it. 
She's an embarrassing yeah, and, o- OC that's just been injected into the canon and it's caused major problems. And they're just like, please like her, though. I'm like, no, you didn't even yeah. write a bit. Like I said, if she was well executed but still broke all of the canon, it would annoy me. But like, she's an awful character. That, well, that's the that's Ahsoka, though. So Ahsoka does mess up a lot of things. But as I've talked about, Ahsoka was never invented to be anything complicated, but she became a very popular character over time. She wasn't very popular at first, but as time progressed, that became a really popular character. So I can understand exceptions to the rule like, hey, this pe- character is really popular. And I as I love the uh, character of Ahsoka, but I think that she probably should have died at Order 66 or at the hands of Vader in Rebels. That would have been a perfect thing. But now with her being in this time frame of where she's at, it complicates things. But you can kind of go, okay, I get that she's very popular and that's why. Reva has no business having the information, the knowledge, or the access that she has in this universe at all. It's its yeah, its just, insane. No, she found it in the archives, man. It's fine. Oh, and, and <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, I mean, I know that's all then assumption. I had a list of questions at, after it that just did <laughs> not get answered. But the final one is, I don't know why people keep, why do people come come back to Disney Star Wars? Like, that's the biggest question. Why do you keep coming back for this shit? And I, and I, I got the answer. I saw people getting excited over when Ben said hello there to Luke. And I'm like, you know, oh there's your God. difference between Star Wars, Disney Star Wars fans and Tolkien fans. If somebody used one of Professor Tolkien's lines in Rings of Power like that, they will burn that shit with fire. They will not put up with it. <laughs> Star- Disney Star Wars fans go, ah, he said hello there. Ten years later, Ben said hello there. No, I don't Victory. Really- you're so fucking right because if they like did a Gandalf mini series for Amazon or something, and, and I don't think any Lord of the Rings fan is going to be like, I can't wait for him to say, "You shall not pass." Oh, I hope he says that. <laughs> None of us will be doing this. like. No, I don't know what it is with Star Wars fans. They're weird. <laughs> like, I well, just I want to see him say hello. Though, which are just like the most superficial, just like surface level. Oh, they made a reference to something that came before. That makes it awesome. You know, they mm-hmm. they don't care to analyze it. To any great depth or anything like that, and we've talked about but, that's, um, yeah, that's the people they appeal to. Talked about it before, but it's the the nightmare version of when they brought Tobey Maguire in for Spider-Man: No Way Home. It's like, so Qui Gon, why is he here? What does he add to the story? And it's like literally nothing at all. It's just like he's just here because you recognize him, mm-hmm. and then you go woohoo. Like the we, story didn't even care about him. It's just like there you go, he's thrown in. Shut up. We, <laughs> we, <laughs> like, we, 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 Doctor Strange. Yeah, we oh yeah. Person? Well, Can see, the thing about that, Gary, is that's got to be considered worse because they didn't yes. like have Qui Gon turn up and then like strip him naked and beat him with clubs and until he says, off, eh. yeah. "Like you know, it's there's a difference, but uh, it's still awful." I, there's no yeah. way about that. Like, well, well, we were talking about it last night. Like the, the conclusion we reached is like they didn't even know until the last minute if Liam Neeson was going to be involved. And it's like, he just fucking showed up on the lot that day. It's like, what can we do with him? Uh, uh, we'll just put this little scene in at the end. That's fine. That'll do. That's all it's they so, have. Yeah, it's so bizarre that uh, you have to assume that that must have been it. Because like, we, we were talking about this. It was like, how could you not use Qui-Gon to give Obi-Wan the boost? How, how, like, what writer in their right mind would never use that opportunity? Fans would go well, nuts for that. One that wanted to use Leia. Which has been what most of this was. You can like, still you, take... you can still have that payoff too. Yeah, but they don't want the second one. They want Leia to be the main force behind it. Like if you think about Obi Wan, they prove that they know that in Episode Four, Obi Wan wasn't broken at all. So he didn't need to be broken because the story was that essentially he wasn't. They broke him specifically for this series so they could have Leia fix him. Yep. That was the yeah. only reason that they made him a depressed emo kid in a well, cave. Yeah. In the first place, I will be honest. I got like fucking triggered when the flashing was just Leia, 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 Luke, Leia, 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 Leia. I was like, "You fucking yeah. kidding me? You yeah. fucking kidding Five me?" Five to two pictures, Again. and then he lingered on her. If you don't want to look like a bunch of groomers, Disney don't have a, a full grown adult get his mojo back from a ten year old girl he met three days ago. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> What the hell was so inspiring about it to him? It's just like, uh, well, you know, she's 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 you know, so great. Remember, you know, she saved all the rebels. Movie. The, the other scene that just set, just seems so dumb in context was like at the end where she, she's got the holster and she's putting on the boots like so her, her dress sense is a little bit more practical and a bit more adventurous and she's like, yes, I'm going to need to make some changes around here. like And it's like, oh wow, this is her empowerment yeah. moment. Like, I could buy into that if like she'd started this story as some like downtrodden, like, you know, 
little flower that's been crushed, you know, like her overbearing parents are just, um, you know, not letting her do anything. And she's really timid and she gradually comes into her own in the course of this story. Yeah. But they could do it. They well, could bring themselves well, to do that to her. She had to be this like determined, assertive, confident, badass 10 year old. They had to do it. But like if if she'd actually gone on a character journey, that moment might have meant something at the end. As it was, well, it meant fuck all because she was already empowered right at the start. Well, this reminds me of uh, as, as soon as that you started talking about this, it reminds me of one of my favorite movies of all time. And that is Man on Fire with Denzel Washington. And, you know, it's got Dakota Fanning in it. She's a little girl and he's, you know, had a rough past and he takes a job as a, you know, bodyguard. And that kind of ev evolves him into getting him out of his shell. And the storytelling is so perfect and, and how that's all done and you buy into it. This was never like the problem with Disney Star Wars is that they're never going into this with the intent to tell a good story. There's nope. always a vested interest in it. You know what I mean? There's always something else that has precedence over the story. A, a, a everything they do. to the message. Yes. Yeah, and, that's the, and that's the problem. You know, it's not that it can't be done. It's that they don't hire people that are capable of doing it. That's the problem. Yeah. And there's a strange thing about this whole show where nobody treats kids how you would. Like, if a 10-year-old said, I'm going to fix your military base, everyone would just be incredu incredulous. Well, if it's going to take him three hours, you're not going to go up there in a little hole and fix it when you have no... Ex you can't even fix your little toy. Obi-Wan had to yeah. fix your toy, and now you're going to fix a military <laughs> station. No, yes. I don't think you are. And yeah. well, if your kid comes up to you and goes, well, around this house, there's going to be some changes. Go to your room. No, there isn't. <laughs> Who do you think you are? It's like, that would be the immediate response. Well, dude, they, they did have the one character being like, this isn't playtime, little girl, or whatever. And then Obi-Wan is like, listen to her. Do what she says. It's like, yeah, it's oh I trust God. her. Like, yeah, but... this, is, this is the same fucking uh, line of thought that allowed um, Lady Mormont in Game of Thrones to take part in like the Battle of Winterfell. Like, And she's uh, like yeah. 10 years old. Like, fuck off! You can't take part in a battle! Like, go to bed! This is yeah. your job. Have you You're been not a commander. You definitely aren't a fighter. Jesus yeah. Christ. It is. It's it's embarrassing uh, that the everything with Leia and how she just takes charge of every situation and she just <laughs> prances into everything and you're like, what the hell are we watching? And it's as though uh, all the stuff about her in, in the OT is there in terms of how the characters like Obi Wan sees her as we see Leia in the OT for some reason. Like he's just constantly fangirling around her. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And like, that's absolutely dude, contradictory to what doesn't make is any sense. No, it's it really open to watch. Um, yeah. the, when, when he started trying to explain himself in the last episode, he was like, you are intelligent, you are courageous. You are. I was like, stop. Stop. <laughs> Please stop. Please stop. This, this, yeah. is, this is the hallmark of oh, modern no. writing, though. Like yeah. when, when, especially when it's female characters, like they have to be constantly praised. They have to be constantly told. And we, by extension, as the audience, have to be told how <laughs> brave, how intelligent, how funny they are. When Kenobi goes... You're 10 years old, but you won't always be. <laughs> yeah. Time still exists in this universe. <laughs> dude, they were they were lines away from saying shit like you could one day end up leading people and shooting bad guys and going on adventures with I don't know, like smugglers and stuff. I don't know. Anything could happen, Leia. <laughs> and the show acts as if like he says, I trust her. Well, why do you trust her? Because in one, she got yeah. near the edge of a roof and just jumped off for no reason. And then in the next episode, <laughs> she sent you into a stormtrooper base because she got in the back of a van. You told her not to get in. So yeah. why do you trust this person? She seems to make horrible decisions. Because yeah. she's Leia Organa from the OT and we love her. She's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that, so that's bad. it. It's all based around the meta. It's like, we know what she's going to become. And so like the other characters just kind of act that way. Yes, yes, which is a huge mistake in storytelling, a massive mistake in storytelling, like unbelievable. And, and it, it does, it comes off very much, uh, it, it, it's treating the audience like they're really dumb. Well, I, which, I, yeah, you know, I, 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 again, I think it would have made for a much better story if she had been timid or, or downtrodden or something at the beginning. And she learns from Obi-Wan over the course of the story to become 
this badass character or to get elements of that like fieriness that she's going to have and that she's going to use later like she can learn something from him he learns something from her hey great it's reciprocal they each teach each other something and like they become better people as a result of it but it's like nope she she has to be amazing all the way through it yep. um, and he has to like get inspired by her because that's how disney works <laughs> you know? yeah well i mean again you say that and i, I continue to just think about stuff in man on fire and, and that's exactly how that relationship was with you know john crease and dakota fanny's character because that's there were things that he taught her there were things she taught him and it was a mutually beneficial relationship by two parties that had flaws both of them had flaws whereas leia leia has no flaws no you know she's just like i'm i'm a princess i'm perfect i'm the bestest ever and it, it, kenobi's just a broken man who can't do anything right it, uh, my goodness except anime but boulders they, <laughs> it tells you that they're amazing and that their ideas are great but it's always the worst ones like leia came up with terrible decisions reva's plan is awful the yeah. wife who took charge she had the wrong plan that they did in the end they yeah. should have left because <laughs> they did they did get defeated it's amazing they didn't die and they should oh, have left fuck. so you're supposed to think it's like oh no i'm strong and powerful can take charge and then everything goes to shit so i don't really know what the message is that we're trying to well, push it, here it's like uh, it's like admiral holdo it's just like that from last jedi like we're told that she's meant to be this amazing character that did everything right but like everything you're showing us is like she's a fucking idiot and like she yep. does everything wrong but and like, can we... it's the exact same thing it's like just believe us these characters are amazing they you have to trust us on this one it's can we talk about how weird. disney have thoroughly assassinate uh, assassinated aunt fucking baru <laughs> 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 so this one drink you can attest this i fucking died when she said uh yeah there's a sith on the way let's just fight her i was like yeah, yeah. just us two <laughs> we're <laughs> enough this, this I, was, like, we no. had to pause the play we had to pause the episode i'd lost my mind um <laughs> it was, it's not even about the fact alone that baru can obviously not fucking take on a sith what is wrong with you? But secondly, <laughs> like when you are told the Sith are coming or a Sith is coming, it's like, so the Empire know we're here then. Like that's the automatic assumption you should make. You shouldn't assume she's alone. You should assume a squadron of troopers are going to be with her. Vader might be with her. You don't know what's going on. You need to leave. And then she's like, where are we going to go? The desert? And I'm like, woman, what are you saying? Like that's way better than just dying. <laughs> Go to the desert if you have to. You've got no friends. Like, what is there? I don't nothing? want to put anybody else in danger. You're gonna <laughs> yeah, die. okay. Just die then. Yeah. Die. Yeah. <laughs> Guess I'll die. Like, why not? I mean, oh, the power yeah. dynamic. The power dynamic of that scene where he's on the stairs looking down on her, and she's still under there looking up at him, but the one in charge anyway. Do height doesn't matter. No. Hey. Yeah, we well, guys, you like, missing the she, point. She's the one who gets the guns out and throws them to well, Yeah, I like yeah. how Owen waits till, till the worst possible moment to take the shot, too. I mean, he could have oh, shot I mean, The problem is, is 30 seconds she was the, walking in there. So The problem is, is you guys are missing the point, okay? Amberu's already seen the OT. She knows they don't die, okay? So she doesn't <laughs> yeah. have to worry about that. You can do just like everything right now. <laughs> That's well, I, I mentioned that. Um, <laughs> Uncle Owen and Amberu have a fucking boss fight with a Sith and do fine. Then later, <laughs> troopers visit and they get in. Incinerated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if there are two Man, people, that was, that was that Peru again, saying that I will fight them. Like, what a no, downgrade, eh? <laughs> if there are two people and you know someone's coming to your house, you'd set up a crossfire. You wouldn't both sit next to each yeah. other, so you can attack from the same direction. And it's like, I know it's because there's no set on the other side of that screen, but couldn't you like faked it? Come on, Disney. We, Owen, it's, Owen and Baru it's... end up being like the one, two of the five people who end up getting shot by stormtroopers in the entire. <laughs> 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 That's what, what's amazing as well is like that that hero moment that she has she says to owen like uh, you know she'll be coming once uh once the suns go down um so pick your position and i thought okay well you know if you're gonna if you're gonna make a stand then it makes sense you can you can defend your property because you'll see her coming from miles away because it's big flat open desert what they actually do though is they they just kind of walk around the compound and it's only when it, like a sensor gets tripped on the perimeter where they're like, oh shit, she's here. Yeah. And they wait until she gets inside the building where she's like really up close to them before they start shooting at her. It's like, shoot her when she's like half a mile away Dude, on the I desert. Mean, like she'll never get, she'll never be able to dodge every shot. They didn't set any traps either. You are. Imagine they just put down a bear trap. 
or wampa trap whatever yeah or, just... or, or get, the, get the sand people to raid their farm that they set up that would have been interesting but oh dude imagine baiting all the tuscan raiders with something and yeah. then they actually yeah that's the, the, no They're stop it ideas we can't have people. ideas here <laughs> ideas bad <laughs> I just uh, I want to see that scene uh, in the aftermath where Obi Wan's like, so uh, what happened when she arrived then? Because obviously some stuff has happened here. He's like, yeah, I, I fought her. He's like, you fought her. He's like, yeah, I took her on. I one v one her because you weren't here, obviously, because you were busy on <laughs> your little adventures, looking yep. after someone who was supposed to be looked after by literally like a king of an entire planet with yep. all the resources ever. While we're just sitting here in the fucking muck, just trying to defend one kid from a Sith. And yeah, now that's, that's your that's actions. That one planet. That you went back to twice is gonna get destroyed, and it's all your fault because you let yeah, Darth Vader go. Dumb shit. I genuinely fucking hate the idea that if Owen was to find out what happened, he'd know that Bail Organa gave away Luke's position to a Sith, and that's why they're in trouble. If he knew this, he would never speak to Kenobi ever again or Bail. He'd be like, "Fuck both of you, you useless mm -hmm. idiots! Now Kill yourselves! Move. Like <laughs> we're better off if you're not alive at this point." I just I love how convenient it was as well that like Bale happened to record that message for Kenobi and Kenobi mm -hmm. leaves the device behind and it's broken and it's not playing properly but it just happens to give the the two or three most vital bits of information in the entire message. Um, oh, and then an injured Riva who's dying in the dirt somehow like just dusts it off and gets a ride to Tatooine. No, they had her limp I'll a bit. Never she limped that. a bit. She, she limped. Limp oh, okay, she limped. <laughs> there you go, and, and, and he poked her in a wound, and she went, "Ooh, yeah, yeah." <laughs> uh, I think it was in this room. He was like, "How, how did he even know that her wound was there?" Yeah, was it, it was covered. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's yeah. not like she'd gone there with a big hole in her or anything. Yeah, it's almost so can like imagine if you just touch someone's stomach, like, ah, it's like, oh, okay, fair enough. Just, I'll, I'll yeah, do that yeah. It, it's like sure it's like they had trainers like a pre-fight boxing match. They're like, okay, look, you know, Reva, she she's got a she's got a lightsaber gash right here, so it's focusing <laughs> on that area. You know, like how did you, you know work that? The gash. You gotta work the gash. Yeah, he probably has um, he probably has Disney Plus, so you would have seen the episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aren't the only people that have ever damaged Reva, Vader, and Owen throughout the entire series? No one else even landed a blaster shot or anything. Obi-Wan Kenobi didn't get any hits on her, did he? No. So no. Owen is a better fighter than Obi-Wan Kenobi confirmed. <laughs> all, yeah. all Kenobi was able to do was force push her because we couldn't have him yeah, fight her. a little push. Mm. Yeah. So Kenobi could beat the hell out of Vader. He couldn't do anything with Reva. He's nope. not allowed to hit Reva. If he walked up to her and like sliced, the show would break. It would glitch out and it would just stop. Yeah. And he'd be like, What's happening? And he'd be like, You can't do that. <laughs> Drinker Kenobi has 12. He has stopped functioning. Drink Drinker has 12,000 watching right now, so that's oh, yeah, awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, crushing it. 12,000 angry fans being toxic. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen a lot of, can't you just turn your brain off and enjoy it? Like, I've seen yeah. that more than anything else. Uh, yeah, yeah, weird like, how that always more. turns up for shitty media, huh? We we don't uh, demand like absolute perfection from our media and certainly oh, not Star Wars, no. but it no. just has to make some kind of sense. That's all we're expecting from it. And it doesn't even satisfy those minor conditions. Like yeah. what you have here is just the most amateur hour writing that you could imagine. Um, and it's. Hey, I think great. that trench coat I... scene is one of the most gloriously funny scenes I've ever it seen is. in my life. I love that scene. And people are like, I'm not watching the show. I just just, just watch the trench coat okay. scene. You don't have to watch the rest. Look yeah. you, you're being very toxic right now. Have you not seen in 1977 a stormtrooper bumped his head on a wall? So really, <laughs> you don't understand why you're, you're saying this. I just it's accidentally, all... by the way. Yeah, that, that was. It, it's just as silly. It's just. It's always been silly. There's Same nothing serious thing. in Star Wars. We all know this. Oh yeah, yes. Star Wars has always been and, dumb. Yeah, that's always been. That's and, the greatest defense ever. And uh, two you know, children getting massacred. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and one thing I talked about in in my most recent video is like they they're they're so boxed into this era of Star Wars because they screwed up so bad on the sequel trilogy that no one is looking for Star Wars beyond you know this era the same era that they hate and and then so i think i personally believe the the intent here is to remake the original trilogy Absolutely. and then remake the prequel trilogy that's the intent right now um because the decisions being made are so contradictory to the uh, things that are happening in the original trilogy so uh, i feel like that's the entire goal here is to ultimately remake uh, the ot to their liking uh to fix all of the the problems uh, that George Lucas created. And uh, so that's, that's what they're doing in my opinion. Absolutely. Um, 
It's most interesting to me is me remaking the About time y'all come around on that. I've been saying it for well, and, and, and what's interesting, right, minutes. is that like pretty much the whole world was chill with TFA, at least at first. And then TLJ just splintered everything entirely, and then nobody liked Tross. So I'm seeing a bit of a pattern here. If you look at a uh, Mandalorian Tross. season one. Uh, it's like people are like, yeah, Mandalorian season one. Everyone still has good memories of it for the most part in the general public. But like, I've even seen people turning on Kenobi fast. Like, uh, obviously Boba Fett, people turned on that real fast. And I'm just like, is it just that um, they sort of they catch on eventually because the the novelty of seeing the era alive once again is worn off. Yep. It's like, oh That's man, Obi Wan, Hayden, Vader, Qui Gon. Ooh, and then and then next season it's like, well, I've seen all that now, so I need a story. Oh, mm -hmm. you don't have a story. Oh. Mm. And they start to realize, like, and then, you know, if they rewatch it 10 years later, they're like, man, this was shit. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a relationship way. analogy where it's like, you, you you just keep telling yourself, oh, they've learned their lesson. It's going to be better this time. You know, it, it's it's going to be good. This one's going to be fine. And it, it like, it never is. But then you, you just put that out of your head and then move on to the next one. Like, that's what I think so many of these people are doing. Yeah, I mean, because there was no doubt, like, we talked about this on Friday Night Tights on very on several Geeks and Gamer streams. Like, no one, no one thought that this series was going to fail in terms of viewership. We all knew this was going to have yeah. big, big time numbers because there's no way it couldn't with having Obi-Wan or uh, Ewan McGregor and, and Hayden Christensen returning to these roles. There's no way. This was going to be massive. I don't know what their numbers were. I don't know what the retention rate was over the course of time. I'm not sure we'll ever know those answers, but it's clear that the viewership was high. Uh, I don't think that the satisfaction was high, but the viewership was high, and it was always going to be high. And you have to be high to enjoy this, like really high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, them like yeah, fading this whole like Kenobi um, and Vader in it. Like, yeah, there's going to be a certain number of people that will just tune in. Regardless, just to yeah. see what happens. You well, get people and, like, tune in just to see how bad it is. Wait, what happened, Gary? Yeah. I can't show this. No way. I'm just I'm, <laughs> I'm just coming across yeah, Twitter yeah. and somebody puts it's not the most disgusting thing I've even seen. <laughs> I'll show it to you. I'll show you to you in the private chat, but yeah, you don't want to show this. It's got nothing to do with Star Wars. It just like oh shit. Uh, but yeah, these these comments about how it's like, oh, yeah, if the fans really want it, I guess we could engage in a season two. And we're just sitting there like, ah, oh, yes, if the fans want this yeah, thing, we'll do it. Yeah, the fans, yeah. <laughs> you remember yeah, we're worried them. about the fans, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Like, I mean, that was a and I, I, I that was a point that I made in terms of um, the fact that Kathleen Kennedy making any reference to if the fans want something. Come on. Come on. That's, that's <laughs> clearly not what they want. I was trying to talk through everybody looking at it, and I looked at it too. Gary's, know, pulling this. Ga Gary's being as on Friday Night Tights right now. This is what as always does. He always brings up a meme we can't show, and then the audience is pissed. <laughs> it, a, that's a cursed I, I, image right there. I say, chat, it's something you would never want to see. No. Yeah, yeah, no, no, chat, no, you no, want to no, watch no. Kenobi 17 times before seeing that image. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! I want to put Tabasco in my eyes now. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> Just gouge him out. <laughs> oh my! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't. I, I really came across it. I just, wow. Uh, Kenobi. 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 Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kenobi. I, I want to say something as well. Like that. That whole space chase thing where, where Kenobi and the others are on like a, a little cargo ship and you've got a Star Destroyer blasting away at them. That was the most chilled battle scene I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. They're getting pummeled with like the full firepower of a Star Destroyer and they're just like, oh, we're taking, taking some hits here. We can only take like three or four more hours of this before we have to start doing something. Three or four more hours. <laughs> Did you like the captain though? Who just said, who, I think he was just pulling up. The only way I can make sense is if he was pulling a prank on Kenobi. I went, look. There's no way we're fixing that engine. We're all going to die. Yes. Because yeah. a few minutes later, he's like, no, don't leave the ship. I mean, no, we can fix it. We can fix it. It's like, unless he's actually just taking the piss out of him, I don't know how they suddenly actually uh, realized they could fix it. it. And where did they even fix? Where did they even fit that, like, Obi-Wan Kenobi's vessel in? 
because it comes down out the middle of the ship yeah. and it's massive. It's so huge. It came straight through all the place where the people should be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's, hey, remember, that's uh, that's crushed ice. So that's the same guy who's like, I ain't helping you. My wife died. Okay, I'll help you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. That he's that like, I'm not guy, helping yeah. you. I can never do it. And then he's like, so when do you need me? You're like, wait, you wait, wait. Uh, yeah, and he's coming back because at the end he went, oh, you've not seen anything from me yet. You'll see a lot more like, from yeah, me. Yeah, like, yeah, that awkward as you're the it's oldest like fuck line a, from Kenobi where he's like, you are a leader. Leaders are important. You need to keep leading person that nobody fucking knows. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they have jump cut Philip DeFranco's editor working on it and they missed a <laughs> jump cut in that scene. Like, was is there is there a piece right there of like, was there some dialogue missing? Because he just, <laughs> like, what? It's I so loved how weird. he was acting like the big man on Twitter as well. Oh, they're going to be so angry when they see my character. And now we're at the end and everyone's like, well, you didn't really do anything, dude. You just no, kind of existed for a while. Yeah. You walked around. You're pretty good yeah. in straight out of Compton. I'll say that. So. Well, what about like the part, like Kenobi was telling how great of a leader. You're a leader. You're a leader. You're like, great, great. It's like, what? What are you talking about? Like, this guy can't make his mind up on what he's telling you. Yeah. He's seen no evidence of this whatsoever. Did, did anyone know some like, of the... Like, he, just, he just lavishes praise on basically anyone. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, you remind me by... Um, you know, you're smart and, and decisive and bold and amazing. Yeah. It's like, no, she's a fucking idiot. Se she's a little, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> except, except for Anakin, you told him how piece of shit he was for all those years and turned him into <laughs> Vader. Good job there, Kenobi. Yeah, way to go. <laughs> Uh, do you know it's because the way you do it is voice it reminded me like some of the lines he delivers were pretty like stale and and yeah eh. um one of the ones i think it's in episode five where he says like i know you're all scared it's like yeah. oh man come on sound alive <laughs> which is interesting yeah, because like i think Ewan mcgregor's a great actor and um he is a when actor. he sees anakin's mask has come off it in peace it's just like you can see that's the best acting he does in the whole series as mm -hmm. far as i'm concerned really yep. putting the emotion yep. in as best he can which just tells you well reminds you of how much we were robbed in terms of how good this series could have been uh yep people I, find I it agree. a well-written scene between the two of them could have been something fantastic and it would have given hayden christensen as well a chance to redeem himself a little bit and like have another crack at this character now yeah with the benefit of like age and stuff and better material um well, didn't get it didn't yeah get and, it. and what's sad is the 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 media tour with which was ewan mcgregor Moses Ingram and Hayden Christensen. That was your media tour right there. Um, and Hayden Christensen really was not in. I mean, he it was Barely a couple enough. of moments, Barely but enough. I mean, yeah, it, it it was really bad how much they basically blue balled everybody well, yeah. with Hayden. Uh, Jeremy, I don't know if you've talked about this on any uh, coverage of this, but like I I was hoping for a Clone Wars episode. Just an episode with uh, the two of them doing some kind of adventure. And, and then you think, it's like, actually, fuck it. Just make the season a Clone Wars yeah. season where they just yeah. go through. Fuck, you could be chasing Count Dooku. We don't have to see him or anything, but just whatever the fuck you want in the prequels. Let them both try yes. and give another go at this. Show them, yeah. show why their relationship was so important. Well, that's the huge missed opportunity because obviously, you know, I'm a huge fan of the Clone Wars and I, I think the Clone Wars did a lot to help the prequels uh, in a lot of people's eyes, myself included. Um, but the big thing is, is that Matt Lanter's Anakin is, is is so drastically different from Hayden Christensen's Anakin. And it's drastically different for a lot of reasons, obviously, animation to live action. And I think Matt Lanter kind of did a better job of kind of giving us the Anakin that we all thought we would see in that era. But you could have done a you could have merged those two together in this series. You could have done a lot to merge those two versions of the character together. But again, this was never about complimenting Star Wars. This never was. No. It, and, and that's the big problem here. It, um, it's, it's so disconcerting as well when you get those flashback scenes. Like, I know people have covered this already. It's like, why couldn't they have de-aged Hayden Christensen? Like, it's really, really obvious that he's like yeah. four years old at well, least. It's I'm like a little Drinker, confused on that. I, I don't know why they didn't. They, they it looks like they didn't even try. Well, yeah. Drinker, I know, I know. Like, I don't think everybody like you're a big YouTuber with a million stuff. Not everybody can afford an Instagram filter, okay, yeah. Drinker? <laughs> I mean, you know, there are budget reasons here. No, <laughs> yeah, like clearly Disney are hard up for kids. Yeah, <laughs> well, and that's why uh, I assumed they chose not to or something. That that was a creative decision. They did not want to de age them. They only did makeup or whatever. And I was just like, but why? But they de-aged Kenobi, very obviously. I thought they just gave him makeup or something. I don't know. You're probably well, right. He definitely looked younger. Like, I don't know what they did to him. Maybe it was just makeup. But like he he looked noticeably younger. Whereas Hayden Christensen, it's like they just he showed up that day and they just put him in the, the, the outfit as he was and just turned him loose. 
I thought yeah, Kenobi had that weird uncanny valley effect though, where you look yeah. at you like there's something weird about your face in that scene. He's moving about his hair too. Yeah, his yeah. Ha- his 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 forehead forehead looked bigger and his hair looked a little bit longer. He looked he looked like he belonged in a trailer park from Alabama where I'm from. <laughs> to be honest with you, that's what he looked like. Um, Did that yeah, mean- it, it was weird that they didn't de-age Hayden. I mean, again, I I appreciated that scene for what it was because that's really all you can do in Kenobi as a Star Wars fan is just find like small little pieces and watch them in isolation so it was cool seeing hayden christensen and obi or uh you mcgregor back in that moment but it was pretty distracting it was pretty distracting yeah. how how he was not de-aged at all it really was they had the best fight though out of the ones that are in the series theirs was the best done like if you compare that one to the obi-wan kenobi versus vader one it, it looks like even at obi-wan it looks like he's never held a lightsaber before it's all really yeah. just clunky yeah. And then in that scene, it was uh, it's way cleaner. Like, there's the weird fight. moves and stuff, but it looks a lot better done than anything else. Um, so this, this is kind of a I don't even know if you guys picked this up as like a pattern, but uh, in episode three, Obi Wan is like, "You guys gotta go. I'll distract Vader because he's already killing civilians." And then you, so basically, like, I gotta sacrifice myself so you guys can get out of here. And then he gets rescued and taken back. Fast forward to episode five, and he's like, "I've gotta sacrifice myself." Because otherwise you guys will die and you have to get out of here. And he does, but then he just miraculously gets out of it. Episode six, I gotta sacrifice myself because you guys are gonna get out of here. And I and then he just doesn't, he just easily makes it. And the other and so you put all that together and it's kind of like you're a strange man. Like uh, but then <laughs> the, the, the thing that really fucking annoyed me was in episode five where he's like, I have to do this, I have to sacrifice. Vader knows I'll never let anything bad happen to all of you people. They're just like, man. Yeah, you belong to yourself, don't you? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> um, yeah, I just think it's funny because they could never have him be captured. He can't be captured by the Empire, even though he was temporarily. Like, yeah, he was. Hands. Yeah, yeah. But of course, Reva knew that they were going to escape, so that's why she set that whole plan up. But Vader knew that Reva was double crossing him, so Vader ultimately knew that Kenobi was there. So he knew that Reva was allowing Kenobi to escape. What? What the hell is going on here, man? You roll it back even further. It's even funnier where the Grammy Quiz is like, Maha, we used your rage to find Kenobi. It's like, you lost Kenobi, and she nearly killed you, bro. Like, what do you mean? Had she wiggled that lightsaber, I guess you would be dead, but there we are. Yeah, because, like, I mean, to to believe that that Vader was was involved, like, so if he knew who Reva was and played her, that means that he had to have intel on her in every aspect of everything she was doing. So he knew everything that was going on. So he knew where, like, this, God, oh, don't think about it. It just still doesn't assume. make sense how he'd know that she was angry with Obi-Wan, though, because st- I don't think anyone understands why she's angry with oh. Obi-Wan. That, that's the bit that doesn't make sense. So he's like, oh, well, you, you've clearly got some weird ideas and you just hate a random guy for no reason. I also hate that guy. And so my, and if, look, if everyone knew that she was going to find him, why did they all continually try and make her stop doing what she was doing? Like, they, everyone was saying, no, you shouldn't do this. No, don't go out and do it. You just sit in that corner and do nothing. We'll go and hunt him down because we don't want him getting away. And, uh, it's like, oh no, we were using her all along. What you just knew she'd disobey the orders, and that would uh, spur her on. Now, what? Now call me, call me crazy, because I'm not as crazy. well my Star crazy. Wars lore as you guys. But when you're a Force user, can you not sense the emotions of people around you? So, like, particularly with the other Inquisitors and with Vader, could you not have sensed all along, like, this person is hiding something from us? I thought that, that was the, that he had. Yeah, he, he had. He knew that, right? I thought that's what it. That's what the reveal was that he knew the whole time, and that they yeah. were just making use of her anger uh, at Obi Wan. Yeah, right. and I so, thought so too, but they a, didn't really come out fact. and say within, that. This is a well-known fact within the universe, and so she would have to know that they would know this stuff as well. She's a Jedi, or she was one. She would know that they would sense her emotions and know that she was bullshitting them. So why would she even go through with this? She knew she would fail, right? Like, none of it makes sense. It. Like, none of this makes sense. None of this. It, it just, and again, like there are things that you can look to within Star Wars if you really want to dive deep into it. Okay, but the, these things are just so obvious. And again, it just comes down to Reva's character did nothing, did nothing to benefit anything in star wars it only complicates everything in fact now that she's alive she's alive 
Where He's is coming she? Back, Jeremy. Where He's is, coming what back. is she doing? Why yeah. doesn't Vader care? Why is Vader just cool with the fact that she never died and she's just <laughs> out in the galaxy knowing who he is, oh, knowing that, that she's what you know, a great line to come of that. It's like there and just an impossible toilet where he's like, Why won't you die? Oh, that fucking <laughs> seems amazing. But uh yeah, where they're like, haha, now you're back in the sewer. Ha, <laughs> that's why we're leaving you and not killing you. The, the writers are just looking at the screen like, You guys believe this, right? You guys are okay with yeah, they left her alive. It it makes sense, right? <sighs> with a ship. Let, let me why ask they didn't take the apparently ship. with a ship, yeah. Do you do you think this this do you feel like there's a, a good story between Anakin and uh, Vader lurking underneath this, but it's been kind of squashed by the inclusion of Reva. Like, that is kind of what, what pulls the show down. I mean, yeah, it's I mean, all I... of it, right? Like, all of it's horribly done. If you remove Reva, we still have a bad show. Yeah. But, like, I, um, I, just, I wonder how much, like, narrative they could have included then without her being there to, like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. the same time. That could have like, yeah. it a little bit and given it a bit more meaning. Well, I do think, I mean, because like, so for instance, uh, I will, because, and I did love that scene in Rebels with Anakin and, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Ahsoka and Vader, which ultimately was Anakin. I love that scene. I thought it was very powerful and it was awesome. And it's always been one of my favorite scenes, but you seeing it in live action. And if you eliminate the fact that it existed in animation, then I could probably appreciate that um, a lot more. But if I'm even stepping away, just looking at like, it is cool to see Hayden Christensen's face in that moment you know just because it, it helps kind of connect that character a little more um but i do think that there's a story of of anakin and vader that you can continue to kind of dive deeper into with kenobi but that's obviously this show was never going to tell you that story and the people involved with it considering the the guy uh, that right that wrote it didn't even know apparently <laughs> any of this stuff that we've covered um and so that's the it, yeah it, it it needed a it needed an entirely new set of showrunners, creative people, script writers, and leadership at Lucasfilm in order for that to happen. I, I mean, think the funniest quote related to the production, though, is the one they said, of course the Grand Inquisitor did get stabbed, and that he's alive in Rebels, but we would never break canon. So, you know, <laughs> basically expecting to come back, and it's like, you never break canon. But this is what I mean. When you say, like, oh, is there potential with Vader and Boa? And it's just like, yeah, but this show never should have happened. This shouldn't, shouldn't be happening yeah. at all. Finding somebody in Hollywood to write Star Wars that doesn't have a basic knowledge of Star Wars is like finding a fucking unicorn, but Disney Star Wars finds it every single time. It's crazy. Yeah, same for all their IPs, isn't it? They never hire people who are passionate about the IP. That's not what they're looking for. Yep. The thing is, yep. they knew all the problems that they'd made and like the breaks in canon they'd done, because this episode actually ends about halfway through, and then the second half is just them desperately trying to cover up for the damage Repairing they've done through the rest of the series. You make it work. They only do it one they sentence at a time, and that'll do. Next one, next one. Nostalgia, <laughs> nostalgia, sentence, next one. Hello what there. I'll that? leave Tatooine whenever you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they totally make it worse when um, Kenobi shows up on Alderaan with like several guards there and who knows whoever seeing this. Like, that is the most wanted Jedi in the history of the world. And that right next to him is a guy who's on the Senate for the Empire who are chasing him. Do you, yeah. If there's a single paparazzi in this area, you guys are oh, fucked. <laughs> who's, who's, who's they suspect has been sympathetic to the yep. old regime? They would be spying on him like crazy. Yeah. Half of his guards would be Empire. Don't, well, don't so this is the thing. Out, it all takes place in a vacuum, though. Like Alderaan has nobody living on it, as far no. as I can tell. It's just a bunch Old of empty skyscrapers. <laughs> yeah. Like, around. Yeah. Um, it's, well, it, I have. Oh, go ahead. Wally. I was just gonna say it blows my mind because like that's the the big fuck up with this whole show is that whether or not they all hate Reva, the Sith Inquisitors and stuff, because of her tampering with the archives and kidnapping, blah blah blah. It's like she was right. It's been proven. Kenobi's obsessed with Leia seconds after the kidnapping takes place, so that means Bale must have contacted him, and so it's over. You guys know that Bale and Kenobi still talk to each other, even though he's considered a traitorous Jedi who needs to be squashed. It's like so Bale knows him. Go torture him. Yep. That's, that's the next step now. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and, and, and all this series that has complicated everything. Um, I haven't watched the, the episode a second time, but uh, I'm curious about when Reva, because I, I, I was when I did my um, review over it, I, I had asked myself this question. I haven't went back to verify. Did Luke actually see her with the lightsaber? Possibly. Or, so, but he was unconscious when she was there. No, when ready. she enters the little dome room with her lightsaber. Uh, he's climbing up the ladder, right? So 
we didn't we we only see like uh, so so did he the hear the lightsaber would he have heard the lightsaber absolutely and he would have asked like hey why is all our stuff like melted and fucked yes. up yes you know? yes like, it's, and that, it, yeah so but, yeah like, that is he was such told, a Go ahead. He was told it was the Tusken Raiders coming. So right. that would have been a question that you would ask your parents. That clearly wasn't a Tusken Raider. She chased right. me across a field. I, he would. He definitely would have seen her, who she was. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he would have looked back and seen the lightsaber, wouldn't he? So yep. yeah, yeah. Well, um, I just want to say, light. Gary's completely right. Like if you watch that scene again, I've got it up. She walks into the room. The lightsaber's blaring, and it's a few seconds, and then we see Luke climbing up the ladder to, to get out. So it's like the idea that he didn't see any kind of light stick thing. This is like I fucking doubt it. Yeah. <sighs> But also, like, Aunt Beru being thrown to the ground, right? Uncle Owen being thrown to the ground. It's like, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> Reva kills everybody, but not those two. Yeah, my favorite, my favorite things on this stream so far is Mahler talking about uh, the boss fight. They had a boss fight with Inquisitor, yet he got incinerated by some stuff. <laughs> 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 That's so hey, man, bad. <laughs> their aim was on point that day. <laughs> must have been. Must have ran in front of those guns or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such a weird scene between luke and reva because when they're in the mountains she's running along and he's above her and he's just running next to her and so they're both running away from each other next to each other and neither of them know they're there <laughs> if either one just stopped the other one would get away and you must know that luke can see her just down there he's like i'm gonna keep up with this person i don't know why but i'm just gonna do it so i'm in the same camera shot it was um <laughs> It's weird, like nobody in this show knows how to frame an action scene. No, no, like, none of them work properly. Everything's really clunky uh, and slow. Yeah. It's just weird. Well, and it doesn't, it, it doesn't look like Star Wars because Star Wars is a, it, I mean, it's a stationary camera. Like other people yeah. pointed this out. I'm not the only one who's pointed this out. Like this wipes stationary camera. It's not shaky movie. It's, it's not Star Wars. It's about as much no. Star Wars as that music was up until the very yeah. end. Yeah, until the very end. I, I'm at this point. I'm all for uh, going full nutty professor and just having Tom Cruise play every role in Star Wars, uh, <laughs> fighting himself. Uh, he can, you know, like one one scene, he can be on the Sith side and be Tom Cruise, the action star with the say. Like, that's what I want to see at this point. That would be much better than anything Disney Star Wars is giving us. Just let I Tom like Cruise play every role. Tom Cruise Jar Jar is something we should all see, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to see um, Steven Seagal playing um, Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> oh, man, do not need much makeup? <laughs> we can get that done. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Drake, you'll be well aware of this, but like, we're, we're, you know the part where she's walking up to Luke? It's like, ah, uh, the part we've all been waiting for and we've all talked about where it's like, she won't kill him because she'll see her, that she's doing the very thing that created her in the first place. This show treats you like you literally have zero brain cells. It's like, yeah. you'll never pick that up. You'll never do it. So what we'll do is have it be worried at first. You know, just facial reactions. This kind of thing that I would be like, there you go. That's enough. We can pick it up. But then they actually replace Luke with a young version of her on the floor. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> okay, I get it. Yeah, I get it. And then they start doing flashbacks to the scene where Anakin kills her. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Did you really think none of us could pick this up? To be fair, we're dealing with Disney Star Wars fans here. So. And then she has to explain that that's the reason why when uh, when she meets up with Obi-Wan. They couldn't have done more to get the point across. And it's so like, it reminds me of like, you know, you ch a, a kid in like literally the first year of school writing a creative story where they're like, the bad guy realized they were bad. What do you think of my story? And you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, no, but it, it's even worse. Than Adorable. That. Like, we, we can't just have her um, realize that she's going to be just as bad as Anakin, the person that she swore to destroy. Like she has to straight up say it. She yeah. has to be like, oh my god, am I am I just as bad as him now? And uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, you are. Yes, she is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what, she, she, yeah, yeah, no, no, of course you're not. Yes, yes, you are. You sh yes. like you should really go and change. But for some reason, we're just acting as if your entire life has flipped around, and now you're a good person. It's fall, fall on your lightsaber right now. Why? <laughs> why did they the show us a uh, scene where she's like, uh, you know, organizing the torture of a ten-year-old? If they didn't want us to think like, <laughs> oh, so she's one of the worst people in the world, then okay. <laughs> She was so evil at the start. One of the other inquisitors was going, "Look, can you calm down, love? You're pushing yeah. this a bit far." I, yeah. Dude, when you rewatch this show, knowing the arc completely, it is baffling that they made her the most horrible inquisitor. It's like, what are you doing? 
you should be flipping it. It should be the Grand Inquisitor is doing horrible things. She's like, hey, we can get this stuff with 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 money. We can we can yeah. tell them we'll give them a big reward. You know, it, uh, what's the saying? It's like uh, honey instead of vinegar or whatever catches more flies. Blah blah blah. Just yeah. just you can have her be that character, and then they can be like, you know, you always say this whenever we're about to like you know torture her. It's like what is it with you? And she can be like, I'm. I don't know what you mean. Like, if it gets results, it gets results. That's yeah, what I'm trying like, to do. I'm just being smarter about this. But when the Grand Inquisitor is like, Phew, you're, calm down. <laughs> you're a bit down, too evil dude. for me. <laughs> You've got problems. Yeah, yes. and that's what I mean. I don't, I don't get it. What were they trying to say with that? The, the other, the Grand Inquisitor with the silly hat. He's the guy that we should be backing up. We should be like, that guy's cool. You know, he's, he's chill. He doesn't want to hurt anybody. What was the point of him being in this show? What the, the Grand Inquisitor? No, the guy yeah. with the hat. Oh, he disappeared, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he just disappeared. I saw people speculate how excited they were to see Obi Wan take out the Grand Inquisitors in this episode. <laughs> it's like, did he yeah. even know they exist? I like, I like when he had his one line in the last episode. I'm like, oh, we're gonna find out how he came back. Oh, never mind. No, no, no. 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 Oh, there yeah, was a crazy, fourth yeah. one as well. Like for most of the first episode, there was just three of them. Then in the second episode, a fourth one appeared, or yeah. the third one. And then she, I don't think she barely, uh, did she say anything at all? And then you no, never see no. her again for we the rest of the series. Oh, right? Yeah, we didn't, yeah. she didn't do anything. Ba and, baby steps, baby steps, okay? Uh, they got more airtime than the Knights of Rin, okay? Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> baby steps. <laughs> you have um, Grand Inquisitor makes his comeback, and I was excited because I love listening to his voice. It's so funny. And I was like, please deliver several lines in the finale. He gets like two, and it's mainly just, yeah. Vader, you're kind of being retarded. And Vader was like, nah. -uh. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was it. Like, why even yeah. have him? What was the point of the Grand Inquisitor in this season? What was the point of any of them? I think well, it was because they had to feature him because he was in charge, but they didn't want him to be in it because he was in charge. No, so they needed to come up with an excuse fast for him to vanish so Reva could be the lead. Out of Do you guys remember where it was a trope in TV? And I want to say late '90s to late 2000s, where when you need a character to be out of a scene, you hit them over the head with something hard. And they never ever like had to go to hospital. It was always temporary knock. Like I think Gary Buffy actually makes this self-referential at one point. They're like, "Wow, yes. how many times have you been knocked out?" And he's like, "Fucking over a hundred times, maybe." But now we've gone to a point where it's like, "Ah, stabbed in the stomach. They'll be knocked yeah, out for a while." Like, <laughs> what? Pelted with boulders, stabbed in the stomach. Qui Gon's just like, "What? What's a guy?" I'm starting to think they just didn't like me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gonna, here's the, I don't get it. The fundamental question what was the point of this show there, I, there I, was no point jeremy said it earlier like everybody pretty much ends up where they were before and that's like the story of disney plus if you think about yeah. it yeah yeah that's uh, true well i mean there's nothing the fact that they've they've complicated a whole bunch of things in a new hope they've made yeah. a new hope make less sense now because uh yeah you, you know what? In, in the scene where he sees the message obi-wan should have been like man she, she she was pretty cold to me uh we we went we did this whole thing, Luke. You wouldn't even it it was it was crazy, but I don't know. I guess she forgot. <laughs> that's, that's fine. That's okay. I guess. Well, I mean, it, and it's like there's so I want to talk about a show that's currently airing right now that does so much for the world that it's in, and that's something like Better Call Saul, Better Call Saul, a prequel, something that takes place in a universe that we're all connected to, and a, a person, and it does nothing but complement every single thing that comes after it so carefully, so artistically, that's not so. Fair. so Medical Souls a story. You can't compare these. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're comparing a TV show to a product. Like a <laughs> yeah, no, yes, Legit. exactly. Yeah. And, and and the people that are involved in Better Call Saul actually care because you know Vince Gilligan, obviously, but that's the problem with this is that the people involved with this, they don't care. They don't care. They are there to tell you uh their truth and not the truth, or tell you their story, not the story, you know, and, and that's the problem. My favorite so episodes, really. my favorite episodes of TV are actually where it'll show you a day from one character's perspective, and then it goes back and shows you the same day from another character's, and then it ties it all together towards the end in one point, and you find out all their days have been leading to one moment, and you know one's probably set up something for another character, and it's really complicated and difficult to do, but I think they're awesome, and so I should love stuff like this. <laughs> it doesn't tie in at all or complement anything at all, and they go deliberately against what it is, and like, well, you shouldn't care about that. It's like, have, no. have you seen um, Vantage Point, the movie? It came out in like 2010 or something. I, so, I don't think so. 
the movie is i think there's like seven main characters and we see the same day seven times until the end you might like that just considering oh, I'll look it <laughs> what you just said yeah, yeah. i can't remember exactly good or not. Of... uh yeah uh speaking of like active shows that are just well worth watching compared to this there's stranger things i knew you were gonna how could you it how could i not mention it i, <laughs> I have know. to i feel bad for not like because i i've told people to avoid the fuck out of that show so much but uh, <laughs> season four go season get four it. so good good so good I, it's so weird to see a show that actually like corrects its faults. Like it's totally, yeah. I was so checked like, out after like, season yeah, three. Up here, let's fix Dude, it. Everyone was. Yeah. That's why every, so... everyone's being tempted back because they're like, I don't trust this show. And it's like, no, seriously, give them a chance. Just give them a chance. Yeah. They take characters you didn't like and make them likable. It's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I really, I mean, a new villain, new character that everyone loves. We go, well, we I, I so I love season one. I think is it's just a phenomenal you know, just a season of television. I like season two a lot. I know a lot of people had issues. Ooh. I like season two except for that. What was it? Episode seven or eight? Oh, dude, that episode it was. Was number eight. In it? <laughs> it's yeah, one of the like, worst. Hmm. It's one of the worst things I've ever seen. Um, but season three, I I hated it. Like I hate yeah. the wrong word, but like I, it it made me not interested in the universe yeah. anymore. Yeah. And and then four yeah. just pulled me back in. Yeah. I, with season three, it was like the writers completely forgot what made the show a success in the first place. It went off in a completely different direction. It started working all this goofy comedy into it. It was They brought in loads of characters that were unlikable as fuck. Just a disaster. But it's like, yeah, they've somehow found a way to correct all these problems. And yeah, it's been fantastic so far. Yeah. It's, um, it's a week now until the last two episodes. Yeah. Is it just two more? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah two, but it's four hours, hours though. Yeah. Four hours of content. You'll be all right. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. And that was another thing about it is that every episode, like these Disney shows, are like thirty six minutes with credits, you know, or whatever. And like oh. Stranger Things is like what an hour, hour and a half, you know, per episode. I mean, well, it was so, Russian. Without spoiling anything, there's there's a character that's going through a lot, and I think I can't remember if I was talking to Gary or Drink Brothers, but I was just I actually like had to double take. There's a scene where she's talking to a, in a graveyard, where she's talking to a dead relative, and she's explaining how she felt about everything that happened, and it's something that's been on her mind for the whole season, basically. The camera sits on her doing this whole monologue, and I remember I was watching it, and then I had a moment of like, we're still, we're still here. She's still explaining how she feels. The music's still with her. The camera's just sitting on her. The actress is doing it. I was like, I forgot what it was like, where TV shows would be like, we give them the time they need. Because in Kenobi, like, you get snippets of like dialogue when Vader showed up to Obi-Wan I think I said in our uh, watch through drinker I was like this is it we're finally going to get a conversation they fucked it up last time but here we will and then he says possibly the funniest fucking line <laughs> in all of Star Wars and then they fight I was like are you kidding me no, I think <laughs> they, they fight for um, a minute and 10 seconds and then cut away to Reva <laughs> like Back the re- rematch of the oh century. God. Now Reva is <laughs> and it's in the dark and I can't see singing. shit. No, the thing is, Mahler though, they did they wasted so much time on that, but like there is long drawn out scenes of people fucking walking and looking and yep. like there's tons of that in there. The slow moving camel that he fucking rides, it's gonna take him like <laughs> 10 years to get to his next house. Oh dude, thank goodness we had two the, the opening scene and the ending scene of, of of him arriving with that camel leaving with the camel instead and then 10 seconds of qui-gon that's a really good way to spend yeah, those, those seconds you have excellent job they, they took a real big page out of the uh, game of thrones finales book you know they were like that's what everyone <laughs> they, did. they did oh it's, um so umbrella academy came back last night today they probably nobody fucking noticed and there's only one thing i wanted to know was the transition <laughs> with uh elliot and how they handled it and yeah they just first episode she's she's a girl second episode she's a boy and she goes i'm a boy now and they go okay that's it all right yeah that all gets uh, cast in or nothing I'm sure I've gotten all kinds of trouble how I describe that. I don't care. It's not Drinker's fault. I take full responsibility, by the way. Um, any of you guys been watching The Boys Season 3? I still haven't touched it. No. I'm gonna, I didn't, I'll watch the yeah, first few. I watched. I didn't watch Season 2 because I, I was told it was really, like, Gary and a couple other people just said it's it's not great. Like, I enjoyed Season 1, so I've heard it mixed sucks. stuff about Season 3. Season 2 sucks. It, like, yeah. I fucking sucks. hate Season 2. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I saw Do the episode I need to- with the woke walk and then just no do i need to <laughs> watch do, yeah, yeah will i be completely lost if i pick up on three instead of not even seeing two would i be completely lost uh, you should yeah you kind of need to I okay think, 
Yeah. Is three good? Is season three good? Oh yeah, Disper, did you say you'd seen an episode or two? I think I've seen the first three. Um, yeah, I, after the one with the, I think it was the one after the woke walk, where they literally oh, wait, go so... to the the inclusive fair or whatever it was called. Oh, it's like you, you're going way too. Well, they're trying to the make with they, they're trying to make it look like they're making fun of the other side, and then the whole rest of the I know what happens is is well, they said they said it's a study of uh, toxic masculinity, uh, clowning on Trump supporters, uh, you know, like all the things that just make me go. You know, I really don't want to watch your show. And I read it's the a, comic book. I wish they would just stick with the fucking comic book. It would be fine, but no. Dude, I've been looking in chat. It is so split. There's so many people saying it's great, it's good. There's loads of people saying it's shit, yeah. it's bad. So oh, yeah. there know. is a. Can we get a poll going? A character- see, what the, see what the chat. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. There is a character in it which is obviously uh, like a Trump supporter, really into his guns and his ammo and stuff. And he's like the butt of the joke of that scene. But then they go into the woke walk hole scene and they walk through as if it's all totally normal. Oh, we quite enjoy this. And there's not a single comment made. It's definitely so not. You don't even clown on the side, right? Okay. No, they just walk right. in and look at it like it's normal fare, and then go through to the side. There's not a sing. No one even says this is weird or anything. Yeah, yeah I don't. This, think- yeah, this is what we picked up on before, like uh, with season two, where it's like the show claims to to kind of mock both sides, but it's so fucking toothless when it comes to one side. Like mm-hmm. you know, they don't have the balls to actually come to it. Whereas when it's the other side, yeah, they'll just go all in. Yeah, it's, it, to me, it's the equivalent of they poke one guy and then the other guy, they take a hatchet to his head. And it's like, uh, this is fair. <laughs> it's really balanced. How is Homelander in, in season three? I've been hearing people say that he's better in three than he is in two, which is a fucking... I don't think that's hard to do, but hey. I, I, I love I love that character, at least in season one. You know, I loved how well, they, they portrayed they him. Completely cuck butcher. That's, I mean, that's the thing they cannot undo. Because they they completely cuck him from uh, the comic books, and he's like the antithesis of the fucking comic book. So, I uh, I did like that that moment of Homelander in season two, where it's like they're trying to like find some replacements for the seven, and there's like one guy who who's blind, but like he's uh, <laughs> yeah, Daredevil, like, Donar or whatever, <laughs> and he just claps him on the ears and like shatters his eardrums. <laughs> <laughs> and he just goes, now you're just a useless fucking cripple. <laughs> and it walks yeah. away. <laughs> just a pure asshole. <laughs> I kind of like the, the reactions, man. The divided reaction. I really think I might try to at least just go through season two so I can get to three because uh, I'm interested because it is divided as hell. Passionately divided, I'm seeing, too. I'm seeing woke as fuck. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of woke. Yeah. Somebody you know, said... Woke, but that'd be so like it is funny as well. But I don't know. Somebody said Mola dr- rip Drinker apart. He's allowed to like anything from Boy Season Two. Okay, that's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll just like... let him know that I pretty much despise every single scene in that. And if you want, <laughs> I can give you an essay on why the thing you just described was terrible. But I don't really want to. <laughs> so <it's fine. laughs> that, that was just like a moment that appealed to like my sick, twisted like sense of humor. No, I totally, I totally get it. Like uh, you know, even when when uh, he explodes, uh, trans. Uh, is it translucent? Yeah, in, yep. in season yeah. one, I really like that moment, but it doesn't make a great amount of sense. Um, even the the head writer said, "Yeah, I don't care. Like, I don't care that it doesn't make sense that he blows him up that way um, because he should be. It shouldn't work the way that it does." But he's like, "Yeah, but it looked cool." And you know, so you know, you you have stuff like that. Like, I, I'm I'm a victim of it as well, where I'll just be like, "Yeah, but I liked it. I didn't fucking like season two. Uh, I hated it." Uh, <laughs> That's I remember I, there was an episode of Mandalorian I watched. I can't remember which one it was. It was season one. And Mahler like, wanted to talk to me about something completely different after. And he's like, hey, can you jump in Discord? And I talked to you. I was like, yeah. He's like, hey, how's it going? We're talking. He's like, hey, what you think about us? I, I liked it. He goes, did you like this part? And I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, did you like this part? And he's just 10 minutes later, I'm like, fuck that episode. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, never message me after a show, Mahler. I don't want you to rip it apart. Like, yeah, give me a few <laughs> years and I'll convert all of you into thinking Mandalorian <laughs> season one is terrible. Okay. okay. The boy season yeah. two is not amazing. <laughs> I mean, if somebody can say that. That's fine, but it's not. It's absolutely no. not. The comics did it a thousand times better. Well, uh, uh, well, it was episode seven, right, of season two that made everyone go, "Okay, this well, is not the comics do." Does everyone remember? Gary said, no, but Stormfront, Stormfront being fucking gender swapped is stupid. Well, so Mahler, have you read the comic? No, I just think it's okay. shit on its own. Well, that, that well, that's no, and that's what I was going to ask because I don't, I haven't read the comic, so I was curious if I would just 
if I would enjoy it without knowing any of the, the previous lore or if it's just going to be. Yeah, you would because it's super, it's really different now. So, it's like, well, real. but, but yeah, but Mahler, Mahler says he hasn't, he didn't know the source, so he just oh. hated it. So, but uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, I liked season one. It, again, it wasn't blown away by season one. I did think Homelander was awesome I and like I appreciated one. it because Homelander to me is exactly what Superman would be if he's not Superman, you know? And, and you know, so. What's great about season one is there's a couple of really strong character arcs that I really like, even though they're archetypal, right? So just for example, Starlight is this like up and comer who can't wait to be the hero that she's seen on TV and rescuing people all the time. And then she gets there and she realizes it's all a sham, basically. They're all sold out. They don't do it for hate helping people. They do it because it's the right thing to do for numbers. It sells merch. It does this, that, the other. And her arc by the end of the season is fuck being told how to be the best superhero according to like corporations i'm gonna help people because it's the right thing to do i remember enjoying that i was like yeah good for you season two she kills a man and then she says i don't care and i was yeah. like hmm it's weird and before anybody in chat tells me she did it in self-defense she's immune to bullets so his gun what? doesn't fucking matter when you get into season three then it, it's all the oh well you can you can become the leader and think what it'll mean to all the women out there. And you're just like, the, oh. the issue I have, I like scenes from the show and I like bits of it. And then it'll come out with something like that. And I'm just taken out of the show. Um, and, and it's just all the time. And it wouldn't be so bad if it was a joke, but it isn't. It, it's done as if, no, you should do this. This is what we need right now. It's no. And they're all about, oh, well, the, the representation of this will really increase the uh, your merit, your, um, what is it? The numbers with the audience. And if we combine you, then we'll do this. And I like that it, it kind of does joke about the whole corporate entertainment industry. Yeah. But there's a lot of stuff in there where it's like, but this is the good part. The problem, yeah, the problem, yeah. yeah, the biggest problem with that is it's it's owned by the largest corporation <laughs> in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And produced yeah. by that. So like it, it's uh, the comic book is a satire. It is a black comedy of superheroes, but it's actually celebrity, celebrity culture, corporate culture, American culture. That's what it's supposed to be. Was, uh, and it was done in a time. Alone. It was done in a time where you could be freaking edgy as fuck, and nobody would call you out for anything. So was now, that time when James Gunn was doing his Twitter jokes, is that what? Yeah, you're pretty saying? much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> it's the same shit as when uh, that, you, know, you know Disney I'm makes stories about how like 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 Canto Bite being a scene in a Disney movie is so bizarre. It's just like. uh yeah, destroy the the affluent people. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, okay. I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Paramount did that a couple of times. They made they in season three of Star Trek uh, Discovery, capitalism was the bad guy. <laughs> so, yeah. and like, let's not forget, uh, they made the Nazi character the one that was complaining about the script in season two of The Boys. The one that was yep. like, "This isn't very good writing." They made her a Nazi. They made her a Nazi. <laughs> And she was using memes. <laughs> she was using yep. fucking memes. Yeah. Ah. Am I the only one that thought at the end of season two she was dead? In a speech. Um, uh, no, I thought she I was. Thought thought she was like, definitely out of commish. I don't know if she. Was, I, yeah. I oh yeah, she's heavily injured, but she's back. And I'm like, this is weird. <laughs> like, I, mean, I, I could have sworn they annihilated you, but no, she's she's there kicking along. She can regenerate, can't she? I don't even know. Must be very slow know. then. It, it might be slow. I mean, like, well. I, I was going to say as well, like, speaking of, of shows made by massive corporations that are kind of shit, Ms. Marvel is is a show which is out at the moment, and it's it's apparently, like, the lowest viewed show in the, the MCU TV lineup. Shocking. Has, has anyone actually even seen it? So I'm starting to wonder if it actually exists, because... Uh... <laughs> oh, God, Gary, no. <laughs> I well, was tricked by you guys from Real BBC. I okay, thought we were going to talk maybe. about it. <laughs> if I have to, I have to see it for Real BBC. I would have been like, "Do I have to?" No, Can you guys talk about no. it. No, so I watched it. Watch yeah. first episode, and I, I was baffled by it. I was just like, I was half an hour in, and literally nothing had happened. Nothing of any note had happened at that point. It was weird. Well, I want to congratulate Drinker on getting more views on his video about yeah. it than, uh, <laughs> than it show. had viewers. <laughs> uh, so congrats on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so no, oh, just no. because we talk about Dude. something, it definitely doesn't help it become successful. <laughs> Drinker is proof of that. <laughs> more views in one day than the <laughs> premiere episode got in five. 
Yes. We talked about this on FNT, I believe. It was either FNT or main event, but we're talking about how Drinker got more views. Than... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, yeah. um, nothing happened because uh, Bisha or Basha, I don't really care what her name is, the uh, feminist comedian Basha K. Ali um, wrote one script and then left said bye fuck off see you later went to netflix so they 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 just had a draft to work with and uh it shows i don't think it would have helped because they had sana amanat there and miss marvel is just a self insert of sana amanat who is uh an editor at marvel and miss marvel is like the eighth or ninth degree derivative character of captain marvel which if we don't count the dc captain marvels which takes it to the 13th or 14th degree i believe going off the top of my head um and it's it's made for a very small demographic they they released it in theaters in, in pakistan i don't think they released it in india though i was i was which has a high much higher population uh and nothing happened do you care about a teenage girl who gets uh bracelets from her her nana and then becomes a super superhero because that's what happened that that was yeah that was, well, the thing, that was the only thing that we got from the first episode where yeah, she just these these bracelets are shipped to her family from Pakistan, and they're up in her her attic, and she just wants something to wear, like to go to a convention, and she just puts them on, and that's it. She gets her powers. Yep, that's all I got. That's that's literally how it happens. There's no there's no real struggle for it or anything. That's that's all you get. It's really weird. Um, but what's interesting, I'm going <laughs> I'm going to be interviewing the guys who directed episode one uh, on Sunday. Like they, they, they're the same guys who did Bad Boys for Life. Like they, they can do action, but I don't think they were best pleased with the script that they were given because they were like, "Yeah, there's there's nothing happening here. What are we supposed to direct? Like, there's nothing going on." Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they say about it. But man, this this show, when Az and I finished watching it, we weren't even like, "Oh man, I'm pissed off at this," or "I'm I'm so disappointed." We just felt nothing because it was like I feel like there's nothing to even critique. You, that's right. not a good that's not good well, that's just, the worst <laughs> i just had no passion to go and even find out about it it's just like that one will be gone in a couple weeks and no one will care dude we'll she's going gone. in a movie though like the next movie after thor the next big marvel movie after thor is the marvels and and they call it the marvels because they're putting miss marvel in it and they have been like marvel has been trying to make her and i'm not kidding you i've heard this from very high up people the female spider-man for marvel They've been trying for a decade. Sure. It'll never happen. They, well, they also wanted Captain Marvel to be their Superman. It's uh, never going to happen either. No, no. They've been forcing it for years. Uh, Miss Marvel's been in a bunch of canceled comics. Uh, Captain Marvel's been in a bunch of canceled comics. Now comics aren't even relevant. So if you cancel them, who cares? Something gets canceled that nobody read. Did it get canceled? I don't know. I don't know. It sounds like I'm making a joke, but I'm really not. It's like you have to have characters first. You haven't got, like, Captain Marvel what? doesn't have a character. So, like, you Shut can't turn up. her into a crazy. We've talked about it before, like like years ago at this point. But just like, can you imagine her leading a team of Avengers? It's like, what is her chemistry going to be with them? Non-existent. She'll be like, "You go there, you go," there. and, and you, like, I can't even imagine how you'd make lines to bounce off each other. Like, fucking Captain Falcon being like, "I'll take the skies, Carol," <laughs> and she's like, "You do that, bro." <laughs> like, that <laughs> God, that's going to be so terrible when they finally get around to it. It's the line of thinking that, like, uh, the the character's actual strength, as as as, in terms of their powers, is somehow equates to them being a strong character, like an interesting character, and it doesn't work like that. Uh, and when you've got no real personality to base it off, like, she's just an empty vessel. Something like Captain Marvel. There's nothing you can do with her at this point. I I can't even imagine what they could do in, in her follow up movie. Um, what conflict can you give her when she's got no real ties to anyone? You know, she's got no hang-ups particularly, um, and she's practically invincible. I, I I don't know where you can go with it. Uh, they're probably all just gonna like repeatedly kick Galactus in the balls. That oh yeah, be my guess. Hey man, girls get it done. <laughs> girls get it done. Get it done. Yeah. And he's he's practically just a space Nazi, you know. Eating yeah, I mean my own. My only regret was that uh, my I didn't make a video on this uh, Marvel show because um, 
uh, didn't care, but I saw that a lot of my YouTube friends had their thumbnails uh, put in a, a a meme that was attempted to slander them, and I'm just upset that I wasn't in that. So that would be my motivation right. is to make a video about it. So I'm really jealous. Where did that uh, meme come from, anyway? I'm not sure. I, I just saw it going around. Um, so you were in it, correct? Yeah, Gary, I thought it was a website. And Ryan and a few other people. So that's my only. That's my only. Uh, regret it's like mm, it's, it's interesting out. when they do that though because i've only um read like watched reviews of miss marvel but from what i've heard the show is more offensive to the people they're trying to make the show for than anything else yeah uh, because <laughs> i think it was night's watch said there's a scene where somebody spikes her drink with alcohol and then she's like oh you shouldn't have done this but then drinks it i was like that's something that's really bad it from you're sending us out to dry countries and then you're putting that scene in uh, no, uh, it's like they don't even know the beliefs of the people. Like, I understand that you may not care about the beliefs of other people and you think you can just crap on them, but when you start going into other countries, they take that kind of stuff seriously. And if seriously. you really want to appeal to them as uh, customers, you're going to have to actually learn about them and respect what they believe. Uh, so I think, especially as Disney itself moves into a lot of other countries where until recently or like next month, uh, Disney Plus hasn't been. They're going to get a very big shock with what they're actually allowed to put in. Or the shows are going to be really short. <laughs> well, yeah, because if they think they're going to go over there and change them for opinions, it's like, no, no. It's like um, when, oh, was it Meghan Markle came over here and said, the royal family will change for me. And the, ev everyone in the country in the royal just went, no, no, it's not. <laughs> you don't know what you're dealing with. That's going to be the same thing when Disney move into all of those other countries. No, with what the, a disaster! With, yeah, I, I was, I asked because they did release it in theaters in in Pakistan. So I was, if anybody's out there, I'd love to know what they edited out. They they had to, yeah. and like, it's a, you know, like all her powers, because they're cosmic magical based, and in some areas that's not cool. Uh, they they changed her power. She has like stretchy powers, like uh, Mister Fantastic powers, uh, in the books, which looks it looks stupid. Like it's aesthetically dumb. She has big fists. She walks around with big fists. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, and you could tell this superhero was created by somebody who knew nothing about superheroes, worked in comics for a couple of years at a failed company, by the way, Virgin Comics, and then got a job because she was really connected because her family needed to give her something to do because they paid, you know, they have student loans or whatever, or they paid a lot of money for college. And now she's like a big wig. Uh, she's the one who said Marvel needs to be a lifestyle brand, not a comic <laughs> brand. Jeez, Fantastic. is that the, is that is that the one that said uh, X Men problematic name? No, that's Victoria Alonso. Oh, it's Alonso. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. in the same little woke pod. Yeah. Believe me. Yeah, so X people. Now, call it. Work. Call so it X people. Idiots that have infiltrated that industry. Yep. Yep. It is sad. But hey, on the plot, I was just thinking there about um, things that they they've had to edit for foreign markets, and uh, it brought to mind Lightyear. Uh, ah. I think they took that stand on it and they kept they kept the, the kids in they kept all that stuff in um good for for all it helped them um i think it opened to like a 50 million weekend when they were predicting well over 100 million so mm -hmm. that movie well, is on the, the fast track to flopsville yeah well i want to congratulate lightyear on dropping again to third and top gun maverick is now back to number one at the box <laughs> office and well, it is yeah. now over 900 million dollars worldwide um i think it's got a real shot at hitting a billion which is stupid um but that movie needs to continue to go places because it's amazing but in terms of lightyear i mean i love the toy story trilogy i, I think those three films are it's a perfect trilogy um, I don't really like I've seen four one time and I remember not really like I don't hate four, but I remember not really thinking it felt connected. I do. I fucking so, hate that movie so much. Yeah, I like the original I, trilogy. Quite yeah. And, and, well, it says a lot that I haven't even gone back to even watch it again. And I don't even recognize it with those. Um, so I probably would like it a lot less if I rewatched it again. But Lightyear. Man, that's just been DOA for me from the moment I heard about it. Um, not having Tim Allen um and bringing chris evans into it i remember the trailer uh i don't know how it failed because the trailer had the the most of views in a 24-hour period breaking the record the long-standing historic record of the eternals 
Um, so I don't <laughs> know right. how. I don't know how it, it all, failed. All it's, those views, but no interaction, right? Yeah, like yeah, it's crazy. Match and, or anything weird. And uh, I mean, Chris Evans gets so many likes and retweets. It's almost like Twitter isn't real life because no yeah. one wants to sell your sell your film, Chris. And the fact that he got the fact that he called people dinosaurs and he got beat by a terrible dinosaur movie <laughs> opening weekend is the best thing ever. Which okay, I take that back. I haven't seen the latest Jurassic Park or Jurassic World movie. I probably would have if we wouldn't have been in Dallas this past week, but oh, I don't really don't, like don't I see it, man. It'll yeah, kill, I, you. It'll I, kill your brain. Yeah, I hated the last one. I hate there's only there's only one really objectively good Jurassic Park movie, and there's only two movies that I like. I like one, and I like three. Yes, I do like three. I do. I don't consider it a good movie, but I like it. I'll allow um, it. But I'll allow yeah, it. see, I, I knew Mahler was here, so I knew he'd appreciate that. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, so the fact that Domi is it domination is that the Jurassic World Dominion Dominion Dominion, Dominion. Um, the fact <laughs> the fact that that's the next him, one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's just Lightyear, though. Yeah, there was to me. This is a Toy Story is a mega brand. I mean, that, that Toy Story 4 did mega money. Now, I think it probably had diminishing returns. I think people probably walked away from it disappointed. But the fact that Lightyear is uh, underperforming so badly is pretty. It, I, I expected this movie to do well. I thought it was going to do a lot better than it's doing. So I'm glad that it's suffering. I mean, it, it does make me wonder as well if there's an element of the audience aging out of the franchise and just not being that interested now. You know, you think the first Toy Story came out in like 95, so you're you're mm -hmm. more than 25 years down the line. And is yeah. it just, it's it's been going for so long, people have just like lost I, interest in it. Or Toy Story 4 was out recently, so, you know. All I think the families I, that would have taken yeah, their kids. I think like that Disney audience replenishes. Anymore, they maybe. be fine. Yeah. I, I I think that there's a combination there. I don't I don't think it's the uh I don't think it's the aging out process. I really don't because I think Toy Story is such a powerful um, brand if it's done right. I just think that you uh, you look at this and it doesn't it it doesn't resemble Toy Story. You know no, what I mean? Like you're you're trying. Video. That's what yeah. It looks like. yeah yeah yeah. Like it, it's like you're trying to play off of Toy Story, but it. it took everything that made toy story great away you know what i mean and i think that was what that was one thing that hurt it not having tim allen come back is another part that hurt it um chris evans were his comments hurt it um current disney and what they're doing right now uh and their image with families hurt it so i, I think you just got a lot of different elements here but i don't think the toy story itself is the problem i think everything surrounding this movie is the problem no i think i i think that's fair enough i i am inclined to agree there um i know that uh i mean heads are gonna have to roll at pixar over this like if this is making oh. less than half what they predicted and it's it's ultimately gonna lose money for the studio that's a disaster for everybody's them. leaving uh what's the name of that company that apple has got uh, skydance I'm, I'm forgetting the name help me chat uh but all the people for all the original people from pixar including lassiter are going over there so mm. that's what's Very going nice. on yeah. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, you, you think about it. If you were to come out with a a spinoff Buzz Lightyear film set in the Toy Story universe with Tim Allen returning, and it's an adventure where you have the other toys making a cameo, I think on the premise alone, that's a huge recipe for yeah, success right there. You can set it between Toy Story 1 and 2 or 2 and 3 or 3 and 4. You could put it anywhere you want and it can just be that something happens at Andy's house and Buzz has to yep. go on an adventure on, on his own. Yep. Yeah, so mega. Do. Yeah, mega recipe for success right yeah, there. Yeah, that would have made way more money than Lightyear, which everyone was confused about. They were like, so it's not Tim Allen because it's the actor in the universe playing the character that Andy yeah. goes to see and then merch is made about that actor's <laughs> character, but they use a different actor's <laughs> voice to voice it. That's but then unusual. The actor, but then the actor that they have that's not Tim Allen is telling people that they're dinosaurs and they're old and they need to die if they don't like his political opinion. Like, what? What's it, going it's on here? Not, it, it's Honestly, not, this like, makes me wonder if like Chris Evans, like now that he's not Captain America anymore, like is his career just going to like falter dude, and die? Yep. He'll be Chris back. Evans, he's Chris already Evans, said yeah. uh, if they gave him the right kind of script, he'd come back for Captain America. Oh, him, him and uh, Robert Downey, everybody will be back for Secret Wars. Everybody. 
Chris yeah. Evans is not he Chris Evans is irrelevant. Hard. Yeah. Chris Evans is irrelevant if he's not Captain America. And I think he's a fun I think he's a perfect Captain America on screen. Like he's fantastic in that role. Outside of that, Chris Evans is nothing. Chris Evans is a a straight to DVD Walmart bin actor. He's not anything relevant. Nobody's seeing movies because Chris Evans is in it. And I think he's waking up to that reality right now. Um, you're not a movie star. Tom Cruise is a movie star. Chris Evans ain't a movie star. Chris you Evans like is an human torch. <laughs> yeah. Not another teen movie is his best role outside of Captain. <laughs> yeah, America. it is. Okay. I'll agree with that. Well, no, at least uh, Human Torch had more personality. But um, like, <laughs> no, from from No Way Home, and and even you know with Doctor Strange. But what they're setting up is Secret Wars. So if you're not familiar, it's like everybody from every universe. So you're gonna get every effing cameo you could oh, possibly man. think of going back to like uh, Lou Ferrigno might show up in it. Who knows? You know, yeah, like they they might do everything. I would. I want out of the cameo era. I'm so that would done be with it. it. It'd be yeah. done. You'd have to reboot the entire universe after that. There's have nothing. Seen, um, multiversal war. Where do you go from there? Well, I think they're rapidly approaching that point anyway. Like, maybe yeah. they know like, the, the game's almost up. Just have this big well, it is up. storyline. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, we're the canaries in the coal mine, I guess. Uh, <laughs> we'll have been for a while. But yeah. I was just going to say, like, the whole uh, angle of, of, of bringing them all in. There's people who put out tweets and they go viral. Where it's like, oh, we're we're living in like the greatest age of entertainment, and they'll show like uh, Han, Luke, and Leia from the sequel trilogy. They'll show the Ghostbusters having come back. They'll show this. They'll show that. <laughs> show Anakin and Obi Wan in the Kenobi series, and they're just like, my God, like this is incredible. I'm just saying, like most of this is crap. Like what? <sighs> I love those though, where you can't tell whether they're just bait or not. We yeah. are living in a time where people's opinions could well just be parody, and it's, it's the same thing. Plastics, yeah, but well, I imagine yeah. if it was true though, and it's like that's their benchmark for quality is like we're just mining the stuff that's already been done and rehashing it. Like that—that's why we're in the best era of storytelling right now because we're just quote unquote best era. Seeing things we've already done. There yeah. is an entire generation of people that have grown up with entertainment being as it is. And they just don't go and watch old stuff because they're like, oh, it's old, it'll be awful. And so yeah. all they know is the new things. So they don't have like a quality bar to compare it against. So well, dude, I can um, kind of understand it on one point. And it's so weird that, like, for example, being a Star Wars fan, the five of us presumably are fans because we watched those older films and fucking loved them, right? But then, like, Star Wars fans, like, an aesthetic people want, they won't even watch the old films. They just want to be mm -hmm. a Star Wars fan, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. It's fun. It's just like, yeah. wow. I fucking hate nerd culture. What has become? It eh? is. <laughs> it's all about FOMO now, right? It's all about being part of something that you know, just because it looks cool. Yeah. Not... Oh, I mean, there was there was a viral tweet with someone who said that they were like they were loving the Kenobi series, and it feels super interesting as someone who's never seen the OT. And it's just like, what? Why are you? What? Okay. <laughs> this... yeah. Go that see used to be OT. like the shock comment. If yeah. if someone was in a group and they hadn't seen Star Wars, you're like, what? How have you gone through your entire life and not seen Star Wars? But yeah, and as time goes on, Kenobi that's getting more and more. And not Star Wars. Like, stop watching Kenobi and watch Star Wars, and you'll know exactly. good from bad. <laughs> you'll know good from bad. You'll know right from wrong. It's funny. There was a comment that came up just a while back there, and it, it took me by surprise because I'd completely forgotten about it. But someone asked, like, does anyone know that Westworld season four is coming out next week? Yes, <laughs> I am the one. Sunday is the one. <laughs> Who's gonna sit through that piece of shit just because I just want to see if I'm right and it's uh and it's all a simulation? But yeah, it starts in like uh in three days, dude. I can't I handle it. I've three I'm days. So close. I could handle you guys, but like this is too much for me. I can't handle it. There's so much stuff coming out. I can't keep no, track of all. Umbrella of it. Academy came out to nothing, which was hilarious. Um, and I, you know, drinker, we've talked about this a mall or two. But like Westworld season one, I, I just pretend season one exists. Cause it's yeah. good. It's yeah. really good. The music's good. The acting's good. Everything. Anthony Hopkins is fucking great in it. Uh, but uh, then season it, two and three happened. Then season two and three <laughs> happened. And three is, I mean, as bad as season two was, three is a thousand times worse. Yeah, a thousand times. I don't know if you yeah, saw it, Drinker. Oh God, yeah, it's dude, I, I haven't seen either two or three. I've just seen everyone's reactions to them, and I was like, yeah, I ain't touching that. Don't. <laughs> Bad in the sense that it was just ridiculously convoluted, and they they really went crazy with the time jumps, and quite often you just didn't even know what. Oh, dude! Somebody I mean. tweeted out. Uh, I forgot who it was. Sorry, 
they they're like, did did anybody know season four is coming out? Like, why is it coming out? My only response was, there's why still some men still that they haven't killed all the men yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I, I've never seen a show that's so fucking joyless and pretentious and and so uh, misandrist. Like, it, yeah. it's, it's not even like couched in anything it's just straight up like every episode if there's a white guy in it i can guarantee he's corrupt in some way and he's gonna get brutally murdered so what That's happened every single fucking episode i'll try to keep this short but like the my best guess of what happened because i i was fascinated i'm like how does a show that starts so good go so bad and for one season one was filmed in 2013 damn 13. so it's a different long world. time ago different and, it's, world. and it, this is yeah this is a, a nolan created this show now yes bad reboots involved too so that has a lot to do with it but um uh chris chris nolan's brother is it jonathan or jonathan, uh, yeah. jonathan. they call him jonah they, a lot of people call him jonah. jonah yeah that's what yeah. confused me but it's jonathan mm-hmm. nolan was heavily involved in the first season and then as uh then he handed it over to his wife after the Me Too Times Up era and this big thing came out, like we're rewriting everything. We have a five season plan. Um, and uh, yeah, Lisa Joy took over and it sucked. <laughs> so, and he had less, he he wrote fewer and fewer. Like the first episode had, or first season had Ed Brubaker, great comic book writer, wrote a great episode. Uh, but Nolan, I, th- I don't think he wrote any episodes last season or co-wrote one. And now yeah, they're yeah. they're gone. They, they, get, they took a, a contract with uh, Netflix or uh, Amazon, one of the two. They're not at HBO anymore. Do you um, do you know who's writing season four? Is it that same team? It's the same people who wrote the last season. Well, then it's fucked. Yeah, it's, it's totally <laughs> fine. Absolutely fine. I mean, I, to I be just, fair, right? Stranger Things one, two, three, four were all made by the Duffer Brothers, right? That's how yes. it's considered. So you know, maybe four will be better, but no. Yeah. They, they killed the man in black. He's dead. He's fucking dead. Like that. Well, they destroyed his character, and then they killed him in like the worst way, and now they're replacing him. With a with a robot, and I, I think dude, got Tessa Thompson and Tandy Newton. And oh god, that's it's right. Like, fair. It's like like the, the first operable actresses. <laughs> season one, episode one is like a movie worth of just potential. I remember when I first watched the pilot for Westworld, I was like, "This could be my favorite show of all time if it keeps yep. this up." It didn't. <laughs> it didn't. I was so excited for season two. I was telling I, everybody on the channel, I'm like, yeah. you gotta watch the show. It's the next Game of Thrones. It's gonna be the biggest hit of all time. I was fucking wrong. Sorry. I loved season one and I remember starting season two. I think I liked the first episode or first couple episodes. The, the and I never few. went and ne- and never and then I never went back to it. I don't know. And it wasn't because I was turned off by it. I just I don't know. I I never went back to it and no. then I I kept hearing that it wasn't good. So. When the man in black shoots his own fucking daughter. On on Father's Day, that's what I'm like. Fuck this fucking show. Fuck it. <laughs> I hate this I show. I, I think yeah, by season three, I actively hate kills her. the character in it. Like that's that's the stage I've got to with it. Is like I dislike every single person. They've got no redeeming qualities to them whatsoever. Like that's what the show had become. Yeah, so, I like, think it. I think it uh, also falls into the trap though, where. Um, it tries to make it be really intelligent with all the uh, putting it things back, like your time travel and stuff. And people think it's clever because they don't understand it. But when really it's just because it doesn't actually make that much sense. And they just really cut it up into a horrible way of telling it deliberately to try and make it confusing. So people think it's cleverer than it actually is. And if you actually go and look up what the story is, you're like, what are you even doing? When season four came out and I found it was in three days. I was like, what do you mean season four? I had wiped season two off my memory completely. <laughs> and I thought season one ended and they went into the real world. That's how bad that series was. That, that's where it should have ended. You're right. Because they tried to yeah. explain some of the stuff that was pretty tough to explain. And me, silly me, naive me. I'm like, I, this is going to be like a really interesting story about consciousness. You know? Yeah. Not about, no, it's about sexism. Sorry. Well, and, and by the way, I used to say, literally like two weeks ago, I used to say Stranger Things should have ended at season one. Just one. Should have just ended there. It's true. Uh, if, if Jonathan Nolan came back and like I'm directing every episode and writing every episode, I, I'd feel better about it. Yeah, we give it a shot. And stuff. Yeah. Um, someone in chat said as well, Maul, have you got an Anthony Hopkins bias here? And I was like, yes. But yeah. also, I didn't watch season two and three. And he's He's got parts in that as he's far as I know. He's got little parts in the second season. And I can't, it, I can't, like, he, he can't save that. No, he, <laughs> like, it's, he could not. He could not. And, and dude, it absolutely relied on him in the first season. He was so fucking good at it. There's some well, did you, 
if they had carried it on, do you remember the uh, the reveal where Bernard was his? Uh, yeah, like that, um, and, and and he uses him to do. I'm I'm almost trying not to spoil it, just in case anyone checks it out. That scene was huge. It was such a like big reveal. It meant so much, and it's just like, oh, this show. If it keeps this up, where reveals like that happen, it's like, oh, you, you could see crowds of people watching this and being so excited. It's like, yeah, it could work out, but yeah, culturally, Westworld died. Like, who even talks about it? It, oh, it, 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 nobody it, it, nobody does uh, yeah and it's not making sense like why he killed it why he set up his own death at the end makes no sense now it would have made sense if they would have uh really continued with i think their original story uh which is hey we can we can circle back jen Psaki to kenobi didn't wasn't there a bunch of original scripts for kenobi that kathleen kennedy shit canned Mm-hmm. And every one of them would have been better than what we got. Everyone, <laughs> yeah, they, these were called the good ones. <laughs> it's all of it. These were called the <laughs> good ones. Get them out of here. Get them oh, out. Yeah. Yeah. The Westworld was one of those sh- shows prior to the 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 line, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the that you know the post TDS pre TDS Hollywood line. So, uh, Umbrella Academy, uh, Alter Carbon season one, uh, Westworld. Uh, Legion, other shows that came out like right 2014, 2015, and then anything that came out afterwards was just like ultra, ultra woke and crappy. Uh, that's what happened. They were in that transition period, um, for lack of a better term. Yeah, that, that does actually make a lot of sense. And now we're at the end game. I, th- uh, I think they could have progressed TV. the plot on because, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, Person of Interest that had lots of series where that. The plot of that got bigger and bigger and the stakes got bigger and bigger every season and built. This could have done the same. They could have started on a, uh, you know, a little park and then expanded into try and fight the world and stuff. And instead, they just didn't go in that at all. And I think what they're going to do in the next series is go back and try and... They're still going to do flashbacks to the original thing, to the first series people might have cared about once. Um, And they're just desperately holding on to their glory days rather than building up into bigger and bigger nemesis. Uh, cause I, if you want that, I do think like person of interest is, I think it's an incredible Same, series. Uh, that's, uh, Jonathan it's Nolan. Jonathan too, Nolan. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know. See, I, I don't know who makes mm-hmm. the stuff. I just know what I like, but yeah, like mm-hmm. that, I think that got better and better as the series went on, which is really rare, but it's because they successfully built up the stakes each time. And season four, I still like what there's still a bit with that at the start of the series. She's talking to someone in an earpiece. I don't know who that was. Because I thought it was the big computer brain. It's like, no, we're trying to get access to it. So who are you talking to at the start that's giving you all this stuff? I'm going to watch it. I didn't watch that's, it. That's my personal bugbear. The uh, the other thing that I saw, and I just I couldn't believe this when I saw this news article, was that they were going to be making a Game of Thrones sequel. Oh, series about Jon Snow. I keep trying to forget this. I was like, this mm. has got to be a meme. It's got to be. <laughs> nope. You guys can't oh, fucking what? help yourselves, can you? <laughs> <laughs> well, they want to go MCU with um, Lord of the Rings and uh, and Ga- and and Game of Thrones. Indeed, there's a lot of spinoffs that they're planning. Uh, they actually resurrected some of the ones they previously canceled. But the John so- Snow sequel is, for one, well, the petition one. We're just going to take victory lap on that one. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I guess kudos to Kit Harrington. You realize that you're even a more pathetic version of Chris Evans without your main character because your career was irrelevant. Right? <laughs> what, did, what, what do you mean? The hey, hey, did he put his skirt <laughs> back and put his big boy pants on? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it's amazing how these actors, they, uh, they're like, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't want it. Uh, he, did, he didn't want the role. He wanted to. To go on and do other things until he realized his career was irrelevant. I don't want to play hyper masculine roles anymore. That's what the man said. Yeah, that's exactly what he Two said. And, well, you know and what? to be fa- to, yeah, to be fair, returning to Jon Snow means you're not going to be playing one apparently. Yeah, you'll be you, fine. <laughs> yeah, he'll uh, be fine. <laughs> he, he did an excellent job of portraying a non masculine Jon Snow in season eight. It was excellent. <laughs> he really did. He, he really, really did. did. He it, did a he did ahead. a Spooks movie, and Spooks is my favorite BBC series. Um, so I was really look, like, looking forward to the movie, and that is awful. And all I can see is just him as the Game of Thrones character. It, it's just like almost the exact same guy. I, I would, I was when the big event happened to him, like the permanent one that isn't permanent. I, I was really happy with that because I didn't even like him as a character before. And then he comes back, and he's even worse. And I, there's a real habit with me in TV shows that the character that I don't like, they always do something that should 
uh, get them out of the series and they come back. Same thing happened in The Walking Dead. The character I didn't like, oh no, he just survives anything. So I think I'm cursed. Like all, the <laughs> all the shows that I like go awful and the characters that I don't like last forever. Yeah. Oh my God, well, you're so describing this... my life. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so is this actually going to happen, Gary? Because I haven't looked too far into it. Is this is this or is they just are they just floating it out there? They're floating to try it out to, there. Gauge, to try to gauge interest. Because they didn't announce a single producer or showrunner. That's the first thing you do is you hire people to run the show. I mean, yeah, you want to get Kit on board, obviously. Uh, you're going to get Kit on board. All those Game of Thrones actors who thought they had this big career ahead of them and they couldn't get wait to get out of that series, they're like. We're willing to come back now. <laughs> yes, tired yes. In two years. Can yes. you do us some more? This, yeah. this is the thing. Like, it's really easy to be in a big ensemble show like that where you're yep. only on screen for five or ten minutes at a time. And like, if you're not the best actor or not the most charismatic performer, doesn't matter because like you're just blending into the the big, you know, character soup of a show. But when you have to then carry a movie on your shoulders by yourself because you're supposed to be a leading man or a leading lady, it's like that's when you separate the wheat from the chaff. And yeah, like yep. we've all discovered, like we're not that good anymore. Mm -hmm. It is still hard for me to comprehend how incredible Game of Thrones was at its peak and how oh, yeah. hard it fell. Yeah. Like it is, it is amazing. It is truly amazing to think about how far that thing fell. I like for a lot of us that's looking back, it's like remember the Game of Thrones war. <laughs> remember that? Yeah. Me and Muller definitely remember that one. And Gary, oh man, we were man. The, the finale, I think Gary had like 25,000 watching and 24, me and Muller on his were watching yeah, my live stream. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. me and Muller were over on his channel with uh, a few people, and we had 21 or 22,000, I think. Muller, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Insane. It was Dude, insane. It, I think Game of Thrones season eight will probably never be beaten for normies realizing a thing is bad. I yeah. don't know if we'll ever have a better example because it was more than TLJ even. Like, mm -hmm. like I said, everyone I spoke to, like in IRL, was like, "Yeah, that was bad. That was bad." No, show. Game of Thrones was the most popular show in the world. It was more popular than Star Wars. It was like popular with absolutely every adult around. There was great speculation around it. People had a lot of fun. There was the free folk. I was in there every day, fucking just memeing the shit out of things when they were yeah. funny and not a bunch of pricks. Uh, yeah, reading the books obsessively over and over. God. I, I, I've lost count how many times it, I reread the books. And it was like the way that it happened because the, the first two episodes were kind of meh, you know, like, okay, you know, we're building mm -hmm. up to it. We're building up yeah. to it. And that third episode. Oh, we got to see it, Arya's tits. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> then, then the third is it, it's the third episode, right? With the battle. Is that the yeah, one? Yeah. It, and, and I made a video on that and I got, I didn't get ratioed, but I had a really low, you know, like the dislike ratio, like in terms of like, I think it was like 70, 75%. I'm like, that is low for me. And I was like, man, because I was crapping on it. And then Gary made a video. I was like, okay, Gary hates it too. So I wasn't sure because me yeah, and Gary no. weren't like super tight. Then we, we knew each other, you know, we were friends. And, um, and then of course, you know, I saw Mahler and it's like, okay. And, but I was still getting a lot of resistance. I was shitting like, on it oh, that so night. Uh, I was yeah. gonna say I, I got that, I got that TLJ fury for that episode. I started making the video like instantly after I'd spoken to uh, it was Wolf and a friend of mine because Wolf showed me it because he wanted he was like I need you to see it now because I don't I have many feelings about this. And I, was I, did, like, okay. I did a live stream before the show and I was and I was getting excited. I was like I can't believe I could go back and watch that right now and I'm like okay, here we go. This is it. It's like <laughs> it's not that great, but at least we'll get a good bet cuz I hated season 7 too. So I'm yeah. like there we go and I have you can even hear the episode start in the background and I said I'll be back in 40 minutes and then I get back. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> And I've, ta I've talked about it many times. I'll never forget. I think it was a, uh, after episode four, I think me and Mahler looked at the spoilers and we're like, yep. there's no way that this is true. There's no way it was true. I think true. one of my favorites is <laughs> Miss Sande is like executed by whoever the fuck in, in King's Landing. And I remember I was just like, how the fuck is Miss Sande in <laughs> what? How did she get there? And it's, in the show, He's they do like the same one. thing. She just teleports <laughs> over there because she gets captured after the ship gets blown up, but nobody else gets captured. It's like, what? What? The, like only the thing we got out of that was uh, the Vari's meme of him choking on the beach. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God, that was great. Yeah. had so much fun with it. <laughs> uh, but that, dude. Ah, they're going to do it. They're going to, yeah, they're absolutely. Um, but I think it all depends on House of the Dragon. And I mean, there's some competent people involved. 
in the show. But uh, just knowing what I know from the source material, it's not gonna it's not gonna grab people the same way at all. I just I mean, I think that, sh- that ship has sailed. Like, yeah, the, it has. As the hype around Game of Thrones just doesn't exist anymore, so, and like you're not gonna you're not gonna resurrect that by doing a prequel. No, mm-hmm. no, no, a prequel without the White Walkers. Like they, they are a oh huge part of it because like what was like that was the what hooked the normies in, right? Is like yes. oh look, it's zombies well, versus dragons. Yes, let's do this. And well, then there's still magic and it's very slow, but the political intrigue is what helped it. now. This show is all political intrigue. That's all it's gonna be. There's gonna be a bunch of dragons flying around too. You'll get tired of them, believe me. But it's all people stabbing each other in the back uh for five seasons, and the ending sucks. I I won't say it here, but it sucks. <laughs> it totally sucks. Well, but at least there's yeah. an ending. Yeah, I mean, you look at something like, I mean, again, we talked about earlier with Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul works because the ending of Breaking Bad was was good. I mean, it was re- it was really good. Um, now, I didn't. What was the movie that they did? I didn't love the movie. Camino. Yeah, I didn't love it's the movie. Funny. It 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 wasn't like bad. It just wasn't really good either. It was kind of like, ah, you know, okay. Yeah, I, I, I would that. consider it mid. It is. Yeah. It is okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the interest level for Better Call Saul is there because you ended on such a strong note with Breaking Bad, you know, it, it just continued to... I don't call Saul will be up. considered an all-time great show if it wasn't a prequel to Breaking Bad. It probably still is. Yeah. I mean, it's it probably still, is. Um, it probably still is. It probably still is. Like, it's so good. And it helps that everyone fucking loved Bob Odenkirk's Saul Goodman. Like it's, yep. Everyone yes. loved that character. So it's like, yeah, spin yes. him off. That makes some sense. Yeah, do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, and- compare it to, yeah, spin off Reva. Let's give her... It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> So what is Jon Snow going to do? I, well, for one, it's Game of Thrones season nine. That's what it his, is. I mean, he's yeah. still alive. Bran's still alive. Everybody's still, a bunch of people still, there's a dragon flying around. We're going to get our cameos. So, okay, look, <laughs> right. So this is, so this is all, this is all taking place after the events of season eight, correct? After the events yeah. of season eight. This yes. is going to be horrific. Wants to bet it'll look way cheaper if they make it too. It'll just yeah. be cheaper. I want to risk, you know? Yeah. I, I, I bet you, man, there'll be like white walkers there. It'll be like, oh, we thought we got them all. We yeah, thought we got that's, them. That's what, I, that's what I told Mahler. It's like they just, uh, you know, they, they, if you want to fix the Night King thing, you just say you can't kill him. He just reformed later. He got no, 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 wait, wait, wait. The, that That's the Night King. There'll be a Night Queen. There'll be a Night oh, Queen. Shit. Which are probably well, she's my queen. I did like it. Harrington falls for right. her. It turns my queen to dark side. Yeah, you killed my husband. <laughs> uh, now and I'm angry. Just, and yeah, then no, she becomes a lesbian dude, and meets Arya. No, no. <laughs> they could honestly be like, there's a whole other side of this planet. There's a whole other world, and it's all taken over by the Ice Queen person. And, and she's coming for Westeros now. We need a team back up. And it turns out all the characters aren't dead. The, the hound yeah. cr- climbs out of rubble, and he's like, I'm okay too. <laughs> 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 Fuck it. Why not? Why, why the fuck not? Jamie's fine. You know? Yeah. Let's yeah. get Amelia Clark back. Who cares? Doesn't why matter. Not? Doesn't matter. We're good. She just got That's stabbed good. in the stomach. Targaryens yeah. have two stomachs. Yeah, you just need <laughs> Emperor Palpatine to oh, kneel no. next to her. Go. She's still alive. No, they <laughs> just show they, they just show a clip of Reva, and they're like, Reva is proof that it doesn't matter if you get stabbed. <laughs> I want to see Brand's. I want to see Brand's rebuilt Iron Throne with a bunch of swords on his wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, it I is. think the review at the end of the first episode would just be like someone like saying like, "Ah, oh, you thought I was done." And like you just see her reaching for a glass of wine, and it's Cersei. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like in the finale, where everything is all hope is lost, the door opens, and there's Sean Bean with gray hair. Like, <laughs> I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> Fuck it, put Tommy McGuire in it too. Just yeah, to that's yeah, us. just to make <laughs> Tom Cruise. <laughs> Tom Cruise. <laughs> Bully McGuire, though. It'll be yeah, cool. fine. you're gonna cry. He's flying in with the, the one of the Top Gun jets, and Tom McGuire is attached to it with his webbing. Like, <laughs> just taking down all the dragons in his jet. <laughs> We're basically just describing fucking Ready Player One now. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's man. that's so. To, so if if you guys haven't noticed, watching this is our this is our interest level for Game of Thrones. We don't give a fuck. No. <laughs> no. Now, uh, yeah, House of the Dragon premieres in uh, a couple months. Anybody I, excited? I, I'm no. busy. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this month is nuts. Because uh, I thought Thor, for some reason, was coming out in August. But it's coming out in like a couple weeks. 
I can't. Yeah. I, I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. Go away. You can't, you can't ignore Thor, dude. That you get. Did you see that scene that got released that people put la- a laugh? Somebody put a laugh track over it. It's fucking great because oh, the scene's off. No, I haven't. Uh, I'll find it. I will I find it. it. I will I find it. it. I think as is uh, as is confirmed, Natalie Portman's arms are fake as well. Yes, he has. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's pretty funny. Not gonna lie. Yeah, I think Thor is going to be. Uh, I think Thor is going to have a lot of commercial success for sure, at least in the short run. I, I think it's going to have a huge opening weekend. Um, well, it's going to be like Multiverse Mad- of Madness, probably, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. And and which, as a matter of fact, is Multiverse of Madness going to? Is that going to beat? Is Top Gun going to make more money than that? Yeah. Well, Multiverse of Madness that. is now officially on Disney Plus, so it is out of theaters. Yeah. And it did Let not me look that up. Dollars. Right. And so it didn't make it didn't hit a billion. It did not. I don't think it. See did. that right the, there. Not close. That's that, really that close. speaks volumes about the ROI or at least the the the, the word of mouth that uh, people were g- giving after that because it had such a massive opening weekend. It there's no reason this shouldn't have not yeah, hit a billion. It, yeah, dude, it, dude. Culturally, it's already dead. Nobody cares about Multiverse of Madness anymore. Already, it's gone. Uh, I think Kenobi probably helped kill it in terms of people talking about stuff, which is just funny, so right? T- Top Gun killed it, I think. Top Gun. No, I, really I mean in terms of no, I know the, the yeah, Disnoids talking about something. They can't handle more than one subject. That's why no one's talking about Ms. Marvel either. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, you're right. Top Gun killed it in the box office for sure. Mm-hmm. And again, that's the whole thing, Hollywood. Along like none stuff. of us, none of us, none of us were asking for the next Top Gun, and yet here it is, and it's amazing because it cared about the source material and it didn't preach and it was phenomenal and it was made for the right reasons even though we nobody it's not like drinker was like making six videos you know like hey we need top gun sequel this is what we need hollywood <laughs> nobody was asking for it and yet everybody loved it that was, was it, it was i thought no one was talking about miss marvel because no one watched it gary watched it <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason for it. <laughs> I was I mean, forced to. I was forced to. And uh hey, I have that excuse with Kenobi because can... you know I wasn't gonna watch Kenobi. I asked my audience and like, do you want me to watch and review Kenobi? 80% said yes. I'm like, fuck all of you. Okay, I'll do it. There it is. <laughs> Watching yeah, anything that will make you suffer, two. you'll get the same response. <laughs> yeah. If it gets to season two, all your audiences will want you to cover it because it's it, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I found it during Kenobi one. Have you seen this Thor trailer from six hours ago? Hang on. Yeah, I got the clip right here. There's a new Thor trailer? There's a clip. Somebody put a laugh track over it uh, if you want to share it. All right. Let's experience it. I'm all excited now. Is that the full screen I'm getting? What the hell? Hang on. Wow. That's a screen. (laughs) Hey, you just, here we go. We got sound. Uh, Somebody couldn't crop. (laughs) I guess not. Shadow Realm. How'd you know? The atmosphere has a dark dislike no other. This is if color feels to try to understand. Well, then, if it's color, we need. Even the rain levels are catching us. She's only going to fall for a minute. I'm saving life, she's quite good at Earth. She's not going to work. Oh, yeah, she's a little bit. Oh. Uh. Yep. Jump the gun. But hang on, he moves through shadows and he's going to the shadow realm. It seems like that's where he's going to be the most powerful. You're right, we can't just go marching in there. It could be a trap. Are you thinking what I think you're thinking? I'm thinking it. What are we thinking? Thinking what? Thinking it too. Oh, I'm That's Storm of Thunder. Disastrous. If this is a fucking dumpster fire. Well, I'm not excited. I don't know, nope. but uh, to <laughs> quote Jon Snow, <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it. This is Holy the thing. Like, I, I've got a bit of faith in Taika Waititi as a director and his ability to like pull laughs out of things. But man, if this is the, what they're choosing to release as like, hey, this is a real funny example of, of our script here. Uh, yeah. No. King we'll looks, yeah. Valkyrie. It has my favorite actor in it too, and I'm not even looking forward to it. Christian Bale. Noel. What a disaster it's going to be! I think. I love that. Uh, but look at the atmosphere of this call after uh, that. Call. Oh yeah, dude! You got you just you just you Game of Thrones seasoned ate us right there, Gary. We were all having a great time. 
None Good of night. us want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Holy crap. That was rough, man. Wow, man. I feel like I just fucked up a good leg. Yeah, it's like you <laughs> farted in the elevator, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> 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 we all we all know it's like I'm gonna have to watch that whole film, but it might be filled with that. Yeah. <laughs> Oof, that was bad. Yeah. So I'm glad I got to share that with my friends though, because misery yeah. loves company. Yeah. Hey, you know, we didn't mention um the Emperor was in the episode, by the way. Who? The Emperor. He was in Kenobi <laughs> finale. Nobody oh yeah. It. Wasn't that I mean? mean... <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was weird. I think... Like Vader's, Vader's ranting at him, and he just goes, "You it... sound agitated." Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was... <laughs> it felt. This is the first time I've seen them in like the reverse dynamic where uh, the Emperor's like, "Hey, man, are you all right?" Because like, you know, you seem a little, <laughs> a little weird, dude. Like, I don't well, know. I think what they were trying to go with is that where that's where he let go of Obi Wan and became fully mm -hmm. Darth Vader. Oh fuck it! How I many times have I been told when does Anakin become Darth Vader? And he most people Darth say Vader. it's on Mustafa, but uh, yeah, oh, wow. he was already Darth, Darth Vader. Like, do we really care the exact moment when it happens? We know it no. happens. We know where he's going to end up. The writers point. care, Drinker. They're trying to make this work, okay? Yeah. Like, no, he's yeah. not done yet. Kid, Shut up. I know it's been ten years, but he's been uh, doing Anakin stuff for the ten years, okay? I'm just oh, looking forward to the next debater oh, appearance where he gets his face slashed off again so we can see his eye again because that's essentially all we're going to do now. Every series, they're going to have to have Vader and they're going to have to have a new person slash off his face, apparently, so we can see his eye. It's going to be Mace shocking Windu? every time. Yeah. I just dude. want Mace Windu to show up and drop F-bombs, dude. If that happens, oh, dude, I'll forgive great. Disney for everything. So. That'd be great. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted Palpatine to be like, I'm sorry your friend was mean to you. <laughs> <laughs> you want a cookie? Okay. Can I you can buy stay you up. You can stay up as late as you want tonight. <laughs> Maida, you can stay up past 11 tonight. We can watch Stranger Things together. <laughs> That's a show I'd pay to watch. Actually. I would watch that. That would be fucking up. amazing. <laughs> Maida with his little popcorn bucket. Like, I'm sad. Kenobi doesn't like me. <laughs> a Palpatine not... Vader buddy cop film. <laughs> yeah, that can work. That can work. What planet shall we blow up today? It's like the classic meme Palpatine's in the shower and Vader flushes the toilet. And Palpatine's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do it? <laughs> Vader, we're mm. out of milk. <laughs> Should yes, we, um, should we do a couple of super chats since there's like 10 million of them that have built up while we've been doing sure. this? Yes. We'll try and knock out 9 million of them. All right. Yeah. yeah. Let's not shoot too <laughs> Just leave a few. Yeah. I'm starting to, I'm getting to the point where I'm going to have to do catch up streams of catch up streams, but yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Daniel Eads says, Good day, guys. Hypothetical question Henry Cavill and Sean Bean have agreed to star in your movie, and David Fincher will be the director. What would your movie be about if you had all that talent? behind it what would you want it to be about mm. i would that. do i would do face off too so <laughs> it's a joke <laughs> face off nick cage baby i was gonna say um, you have to get nick cage in if you do it yeah i know uh but no in all seriousness that's a that's a hell of a cast right there and a director so man i mean you'd want something maybe demolition man style futuristic i probably want to <laughs> talk to um Fincher about what does he think? Like, where do you want to take it if you have yeah. those two actors yeah. exactly? Yeah, dude, Finch because like Fincher in his prime, Fincher was like ridiculous, a, a crime drama. Like, a, like you know, I'd remake Thelma and Louise, except it'd be Theo and Lewis, and it'd just be masculine. <laughs> That's what I do? Stop being so toxic, Gary. Yeah, <laughs> that door Thumbo and Louis. Um. Cleveland Brown says, Gone Girl 2, Gone Harder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There's your answer right there. Gone Girl 2, Gone Harder. Shout out to Cleveland Brown. <laughs> oh, shit. That's good. Uh, Jim, Jim Junkie said, uh, a special thanks to all of you. Drinker, Mauler, Gary, okay. Geek, 
gamers and Disparu for rescuing me from watching all of this crap. But I just wanted to point out to the chat, you're welcome. The, the, uh, who was it? Bastin Court. You're the one who went homoerotic. I wasn't thinking about homoerotic. I was thinking <laughs> about guys just shooting bad guys and beating the fuck out of people, not fucking each other. <laughs> but you do you, okay? <laughs> Sorry, That's Greg. one thing that got me about Kenobi, though. There was a lot of people that were just saying, I don't watch the show, I just watch the reviews. So I think a lot yeah. of people... Uh, for Ed, That's why all the thing about, oh, no, well, you talking about it advertises the show. No. Somebody saying this is awful doesn't make people go and see it. <laughs> that just never happened. Yeah. yeah. No, no, if that, no, like, I, yeah. Oh, there's always that catharsis of just seeing someone, like, tear down something shit. Like, even if you haven't watched the thing, you can still have a laugh about it, so... Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, and after I've done my videos, I always go and watch everyone else's. <laughs> That's yeah, my way of I calming do. down. No, it's really therapeutic, right? Mm. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy did come out and say something to the effect of if there was enough audience interaction uh, that we get a season, I'm sure we get a season <laughs> two if there was like if there was millions and millions of people watching this, which I don't think there are, uh, and it would be just as dumb as season well, one. Well, she's kind of backed herself in a corner now because if they don't get a season two are you essentially selling us that you didn't have the numbers and enough interest wasn't there because you've basically left it at the a you know the door of if we have enough people that want it well so what, if we don't get it does that mean you didn't have enough interest no, what, was the total, what was the total viewers over five days do we do we have a number is it two million two and a half million i, I have no idea it's like the it's biggest seen. premiere on disney plus so it had to be bigger i think i saw two and a half million right chat Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, that's pathetic. Two and a half million people over five days watching a TV show that costs 10 million bucks an episode, maybe more. That's terrible. That's With awful. Characters like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know but the only thing I saw is I remember that like that weekend that, that Stranger Things and Top Gun was destroying it. Um, destroying in terms it. Of over, yeah. Overall yeah. numbers or overall like Google trends and things like that. And to give you an idea of what's happened with stranger things i think you know, gary probably know as well but um kate bush's song that relates to a really important moment in the in the show is like skyrocketed in popularity again it started now. In, mm -hmm. in the u.s and the uk like, ironically i fucking hate that song now because i've heard it so many times mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't think i can hate it i love the scene too much well, <laughs> i like it now but i was where you were at in 1984 when it came out or five or six when it was like being played every five seconds on your rock of the 80s or whatever the hell it was i'm fine with well, it now i got over it and who like like let's be completely honest here you guys of all including myself have heard people say yeah you should check out season four Strangely. who said yeah you should check out kenobi who said that nobody 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 Every, and again that it because we almost feel obligated to but like nobody's recommending yeah. it well again and i again my interest level was not there for season four it just wasn't but uh, josiah rises uh you know part of geeks and gamers shout out to him it's his birthday yesterday so happy late happy birthday, birthday buddy um but yeah josiah was telling me he's like dude it's really good i'm like really i mean i was really checked out after three but then a few other people have mentioned it and that's how you start to get people to, yeah. to respond to something and again none of, i don't think any of us were like going yeah this is going to be great this is going to be awesome but because the interest was there you watched it, and we don't go into anything wanting to hate it. We genuinely don't. You just can you can see <laughs> you can see the uh, you can see the tea leaves, I guess, um, on a lot of these things. Stranger Things is really good though, and and they they Ooh. corrected course, and that is very very rare. That is very rare these yeah. days to correct course. Squid yeah, Game was exactly the same. It was something which had zero marketing to it. It yeah. was just a show that was put up, but word of mouth alone made that like the biggest TV show at its time. Yeah, Absolutely. Arcane had a similar thing. It, it wasn't. It's not I like need to watch Arcane. It. I need to watch Arcane. I still haven't watched it. Yeah, I, I think you like that. it. Yeah, yeah, I think you like it a lot. Um, the yeah, the, the reality here is just that uh, Kenobi will only be recommended among like Disneyed types as, for as long as it's culturally relevant. As soon as it's, nobody's talking about it anymore, be like, no, you don't need to see it. Nobody cares. Yeah, and I think we've 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 reached an era now. I mean, we've gotten a reminder with the the Disney Star Wars stands out there. The Marvel stands are like a oh, thousand times worse than Disney Star Wars stands now. They they have passed the torch. Uh, I feel like those mm, those two camps have merged. Honestly, I, I kind of do. Like, well, I know Gary you haven't poked them both as, as much as I have. And, Jeremy. And Gary's they intertwined. I know. Yeah, but man, the Star Wars dude, come on, they're bad right now. They are bad. But that doesn't Ooh. seem bad. They 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 weren't. They're not any bad 
worse now than they were for the last Jedi. The last Jedi was peak. Like, dude, I, I'm yeah. I, like Miles Morales comes out with the most racist fucking comic ever, and they're still <laughs> defending this guy, which is hilarious. And I'm like, I'm not saying anything that's not true. I haven't yet to come out and say I hate Miles Morales. I just said he's uh, he's Miles Morales. He's not Spider Man. Well, he's I think Morales. that I think that Marvel. I think Marvel has more more stands than than Disney Star Wars than, than, because. Fake. I yeah, seriously, I think you guys are underestimating the bleed over. The, these people, like they, move they are from kind fan of they, they, they are they are one and the same in a lot of ways. They are they like the they like fan skinwalkers where they'll just be like, yeah, I love Star Trek. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, like with Disney, with with me, with, with Disney Star Wars, th like they want to discredit. Um, with Marvel stands, they want me to die. So it, there's a little <laughs> different yeah. there, just slight. <laughs> I prefer discredit over death, to be honest with you. But you know, we don't always get choices. Like all the hills to die on as well. Like this, right? this big monolithic, like corporatized piece of like generic entertainment. Like that's the thing you're going to viciously defend. Like why? Yeah, what? it's a uh, it's a it's it's a disaster. But I I enjoy it. It's I, that's weird, why though, Jeremy. How they we never see him any of them at cons. Like outside. Never see never see yeah. any of them at cons. They always complain because we never make positive videos. But yet every time I do make something positive, or if I'm on a gaming stream or I've got nine other channels, you're never there. But every time I complain about something, you're there to complain about my complaining. It's almost almost like you need me, you know, positive. and you and all they need that they need our negativity, you know, because they're they're never there to support anything. Where's a top gun? We praised it nonstop. We praise Cobra Kai nonstop. You know, we praise like I've talked about Yellowstone's really good. I've made a I've made a positive Yellowstone video, a couple of those. Um, you know, Better Call Saul is great. Um, which again, Better Call Saul. Introducing a female character <gasps> into a pre-existing story <gasps> that wait a minute, compliments the story. Holy shit. What, what a what a what a what an amazing accomplishment. One of the best which, female characters ever dude, written. Kim, Kim Wexler is fantastic and my the biggest piece of this puzzle is me speculating like what's going to happen with Kim. I know what right? is going to happen with Kim. Mahler that is how you do both it. of us. Right I don't want to know shit, Mahler. Wait, have you guys not watched? <laughs> I told you like how far. We, well, we've been. Wait a minute. Oh wait, no, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm talking about like I've made it to the mid season. Oh okay. okay, yeah, that's all. Oh I yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Okay, no, I was thinking he's knew something else. I was about, I was about to mute him on Twitter if he knew anything. Else. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I already yeah. spoil bad shows. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the issue when you're about um, negative and positive videos. Not only do I think negative videos are a lot more funny, I think I just taking the piss out of something yeah. is way more funny than saying go and watch something. But like, if I wanted to recommend person of interest and make a video, I can't say anything about it because I want you to go and watch it. And so yeah. anything I say will ruin the show for you. Um, yeah. And so I think from a video perspective, like there's a reason I prefer doing negative videos, not just because I think it sort of fits how I look at stuff generally anyway, but it's what I enjoy. And I think make I think it's more entertaining than just yeah. going, you should watch this show. If it's something you like... want to say. You like re I mean, like really feel passionate about like you could do a spoiler free thing, like a short video. It is possible. I've done it a couple times where I try I'm like it's hard and they don't usually do as well. Mine have done OK. Right. But at least I did it and I'm, I didn't spoil it. And I tried to convince you to go see it. That's uh, I, I even did that kind I of with Dune, like which is a movie I was like lukewarm on. This, I, this uh, I really long. enjoy gushing about something I like. Um, I know you'd be like, well, judging for your videos, you don't do it very often. It's like, oh, I've done it a couple of times, but it's mainly uh, in the EFAP streams. That I, we did like, I think, 20 plus hours just talking about how good Arcane is. And it's like, if if you told me like no one's going to watch that, I'd just be like, okay, I still want to do it because I really, really like it. And I kind of do have an investment to some degree in trying to balance out a little bit, not simply say this bad, this bad. I, I would like to try and push some stuff I think is good because... Uh, you know, it, it's trying to convince people we're not in a horrible, horrible world where every piece of media sucks. I'd be like, hey, there's some good stuff out there. But I totally understand what you're saying. It's like you would you would opt to go go watch it and enjoy it. You'll love it sort of thing. I, I do quite enjoy sometimes being like, hey, did you catch this, this, this? It matches this. Which, by the way, uh, Gary, that's actually one of the things I've been dying to talk to you about is, is just that... Um, uh, without spoiling anything, this will mean something to you, but the, we've been wondering what song might be played 
from a certain character in in Stranger Things, and just oh yeah, yeah. Re- just remember that um, he, you know, Puppet Master comes up a couple times as a uh, a commentary from him about the D and D game and different things. Basically, there's a prediction on what song he might go with from a particular band, and I'm getting pretty hyped for that idea. Stuff like that, just picking up little details and being like, "Did anyone else see this?" And then someone else goes, "Oh, I didn't. That's cool." It's like I enjoy that as much as I enjoy. Did anyone pick up how fucking stupid this is? <laughs> it's like, well, it, yeah, it, it makes sense with the year they're in too, with what song you're. Referring. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I'm really hoping. Yeah, come through for me, show. I need you to. Uh, let me do the next super chat here. Uh, it's a two-parter from Chuxenhausen, who said, "Hail Drinker, just reminding you all that Cobra Kai will be back on September 9th, and it'll be a thousand times better than anything that's been oh shown." Oh my before. god! September uh, 9th? Curious. That's not that far. It's no, it's not long now. Um, also curious on the update to the possible interview with the cast. Maybe Jeremy can work some magic so you two can interview them together. Uh, yeah, so working on that at the moment. But um, yeah, the 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 ideal would be to get someone like William Zabka. To, to talk about the show but yeah i mean these guys are pretty damn busy and, and pretty high profile i was i was so. few, i was just a few feet from him just the other day and uh almost shot my shot but i was like i'll wait i'll have another opportunity so but yeah he's man cobra kai i don't know what it is like i, I was worried about what was going to happen when netflix you know got involved uh, i wasn't sure what was going to happen with that series but it, it is just continues to reinvent and and step things up and you know, even like, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, there's some dumb stuff. There's fucking karate in the middle of streets and there's no police in this entire world, apparently. And I, I know all of that, but man, it just really does have such a good vibe and a good feel for it. And I love everything they're doing with that series. I really do. Um, yeah. And four, four to me was the second best season. Yep. After the first. I agree. You know, oh, they man, I'll, need to watch. I, I think my, my top episode was the one where you had the flashbacks to Crease when he was in Vietnam. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. That was just so fucking well done for it. Like you say, a kind of goofy show about a karate um, to, to work in drama like that and contrast it with, with who he is now in the present day. It was just brilliant. It, it was so well done. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, John Mahler, have you not watched it at all? No. Oh, you got to do it, Mahler. You got to do it. I'll watch well, Arcane. I, I, I'll watch Arcane if you watch Cobra Kai. That's not yeah, fair. Yeah. I got to watch like four seasons. You get one. There are only 30 minutes there's, episodes. There's though. girls yeah. with like dyed hair and SJW haircuts. It's totally fair. <laughs> <laughs> that was before <laughs> SJWs were a thing. That's the, I, they're adapting. They're, hey, Gary, you have to appreciate it. They're adapting source material accurately, okay? okay. <laughs> you got to like that. My son is a huge League of Legends guy. The big one, uh, my tall mm-hmm. one, and uh, he's been trying to get me to watch it too. So. Well, like uh, with Cobra Kai, and it's the same thing with Ma- Top Gun Maverick. I, no one was sitting around like we need the next chapter of Karate Kid. <laughs> um, and I remember when I heard about it because people, this is back in like TLJ after Last Jedi, my channel was just taken off, and and I got emails from people who are like, Jeremy, if you're if you're upset about Star Wars, you got to watch Cobra Kai, and I'm like, YouTube original with a couple of washed up actors that i haven't heard about in 20 years this sounds terrible why would i watch this and i watched the first episode i'm like my god this is amazing <laughs> <laughs> it's so wow. good and it, it, the first season's perfect like it's a perfect season of television um, Can I just, how they i just saw the funniest fucking comment Gary, watch Arcade. I'm 56 and I thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> Them boomers would never like Arcade. Yeah. Died <laughs> uh, here. I'm still surprised. Like the amount of praise in the chat for Arcane. Arcane really did a number on people. Like I it will really watch did. it. I will watch it. Just. Mo- Bug Mauler to watch Cobra Kai. You, yeah. chat, I believe oh, in you. I yeah. believe in you, chat. Yeah. You can do I, it. I convinced you to watch Arcane, and you you enjoyed it. And I wouldn't steer you. Means you've spent your one token, and we're old. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got a drinker. Mauler recommendation on this. If it goes wrong, I know who to blame. Yeah. Oh, no. If the toxic geeks and gamers guy is recommending it, you know it must be something, right? Come on, Mauler. So yeah, I don't like I anything know, according man. to the internet. I haven't liked anything ever. Aren't you the guy that recommended the Tomorrow War? <laughs> hey, I never <laughs> said it was good. No, never yeah. said it was good. It was enjoyable. It wasn't good. That see, there's a difference. There's a difference. 
I said talking it was about stupid. the guy who culturally yeah. like his culture, <laughs> like uh, the breast of his culture is like chicken breasts. It's little chicken nuggies and uh, like Velcro shoes. So if Jeremy likes it. Everybody likes it, it. It was stupid as hell, but I did enjoy the hell out of it. it really was <laughs> Things were so bad back then. I was just like, hey, it didn't like offend me. <laughs> I was like, I was, it wasn't fucking stupid with woke shit. <laughs> Even though kind of. Yeah, I'm a. Well, I'm not a boomer. I'm kind of a Gen X boomer. I'm fine with that. I'm looking at the chat. They always call me boomer. I own that you shit. You can be a boomer like five years old. It's a mindset, okay? Uh, and Jeremy did guy. delete the video. That's right, chat. He deleted like, the video. He deleted the video. <laughs> uh, Dino oh. said, uh, Hey, Drinker, I just got Mission Vendetta today and can't wait to read it. Also, I'd like to know if you can recommend any whodunit movies. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed the, the book, man. Uh, Mission Vendetta is the German version, so I hope you're actually a, a German speaker. Otherwise, you're going to struggle with this one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> uh, Who done it? Movies. So a good a good sort of murder mystery movie. Um, Drink, would you recommend Knives Out for the Who Done It? That's exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I wanted to say that one too. Uh, I, I always had a soft spot for Murder on the Orient Express, like the old, the old version. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ray Skywalker yeah, version? Classic mystery. No, he said old version. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> By the I way, is the Ray Skywalker it, version? I saw it in the theaters. It wasn't terrible. Is Knives Out good? Because I've heard a lot of people no. tell me it's good. <laughs> I <laughs> refuse. Yeah, I Everyone told that. me it was good. <laughs> then I watched it. It was shit. <laughs> we, we kind of broke it down, and not much of it makes sense. No. A re engine I'm so so nice. He's oh, making yeah. two more of those. It, yeah. It's a, a who done it movie I like that I think a lot of people will probably despise is Basic. I don't know if any of you have seen that. I've really seen old, two thousand and three. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was awesome, but uh, you look at the audience score. It's like, like it's got twenty one percent from critics, sixty three from audience, and I'm like, I thought it was great. <laughs> I remember it being filled with twists, um, but I can't mm. remember the storyline anymore. It's one of the films where it keeps showing you the same day from different people's perspectives. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's oh, going yeah, to be interrogated, yeah, yeah. and then they give their version of the events of what happened that day. You know, do you know what I do remember? And I'll keep spoiler free, but um, oh, fuck, what's his name? The guy who's in Saving Private Ryan and some of Seth MacFarlane's projects. He's got like um, uh, his surname is like really long, but he's in that movie, basic. And what happens to him is um, they're interviewing him, and he's in like a hospital bed, and something happens. I don't want to say anymore before we ruin it. But I remember being it, it's. It, it was it was impactful enough that I remember it entirely, but I don't remember anything else from the plot of that film. The the main twist of the entire plot, I have a feeling if I watched it in today's climate, I'd just like burst out laughing. <laughs> because I think the way they deliver it all would be hilarious. I need oh, to go back and watch now with all of that. Giovanni Rubisi. It's not even a long surname, yeah. it's just a name that is very unique. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah a lot of people were talking about Clue. Weird. I don't remember. Clue. Clue is awesome. I, don't Clue is awesome yeah. I can't watch anymore because it's got a couple of weirdos who made like I love this movie when it came out. Usual suspects, man. It was fucking awesome. But Brian Singer, Tim Curry, Kevin Spacey. Uh, mm. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um the dude, last I one about... I watched was Murder Mystery. <laughs> the Adam Sandler Netflix. One. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> The seal of approval. <laughs> Here, here's a question from Joe Biden's bicycle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> didn't know he was a fan. Not my I, vote. <laughs> yeah, just his bike. Uh, with the state of Star Wars now, what are your guys' thoughts on Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon, a movie he pitched to Lucasfilm over a decade ago that didn't go into fruition um, and decided to make it uh, his own thing? I mean, I hate Zack Snyder's DCEU passionately. So, um, join you on that one. But, Can you uh, I, Zack Snyder making a Star Wars movie. I, I think it would be terrible. Uh, I think it'd be terrible. Well, he's doing it, it's, it's original now. So, <laughs> so was Army of the Dead. <laughs> yeah, I will. Army of the Dead was shit. I, 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 I yeah, I got nothing for you. I, I, I like, yeah, and and I, I liked Dawn of the Dead a lot, and I, I was looking forward to Army of the Dead. I like Dawn um, of the Dead. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I'll give you that. I actually like Dawn of the Dead, too. Dead. Exactly. Yeah. It's stuff Watchmen, I, I fucking it, yeah. love Watchmen. I, 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 I love that movie. I love his Watchmen movie as well. Uh, I think, it, And I haven't even seen the extended version. I've just seen the extended version. The extended version, version is better. It. It's yeah. better. Oh, it's I, love, I love Watchmen. Um, but like, if we're going so, with, you know, your latest thing represents your current sort of abilities, like Army of the Dead, he had complete freedom of the script for that, right? 
like yeah and then he bought like some broken japanese lens to put on his camera and then like we could see like focal points like about this big on the screen for everything that was really mm -hmm. fun to watch so like yeah. you know i don't think it's looking good but hey you know i'll give it a shot i'll give his I'll always give his work a I shot will. i will yeah yeah. I mean, he's not a bad director, and he's just—he's got his own vision on, for things, and some kind things really work out. So, so, well, yeah, he definitely uh, cucks the Warner Brothers. We know yeah, that for a fact, but, uh, but it, it has no impact. I mean, I told him to his face. I told him like I don't like your DC movies, but I'm looking forward to Army. Uh, <laughs> you the, also you know, told him that him, like so. about the the shit he would get. I did, but it didn't he matter. Did. Yeah, he didn't, didn't matter. Didn't listen till till Daddy Warner Brothers stepped in, but. You know, um, but that, oh, none fun. of that has any been so about about my opinion on his movies. So no, no. As, as someone just mentioned, because I did completely forget, Dawn of the Dead was written by James Gunn. Mm. Oh. And then Watchmen I keep was forgetting adapted. that. I always forget about that. But he did do even with the directing. I thought the directing in Dawn of the Dead was well, good kind of too. Like, I was just like, I really enjoy that movie a lot. Yeah. That's the thing. I think I think he just needs a better writer than he is. He does because Sucker Punch sucks. I fucking yeah. hate Sucker Punch yeah. so much. I, I genuinely forget what the story is. I just remember like the fun fight scenes. <laughs> that's all yeah, I remember. From that that's movie. what they sold it on, and it was yeah, it was something completely different. It kind of like tried to do a Pan's Labyrinth ish kind of thing, uh, and I had to watch the end of it. I've told the story a million times, but I don't care because I suffered. You suffer. I had to watch the end 150 times, 150 times because wow. the DVD had a problem, so I had to keep going back and back. Fuck it out burn that fucking movie by the time i was done jesus i'm so sorry it's okay i'm, I'm fine I, I went to therapy uh i'm i'm good i'm good what do you think these live streams are gary therapy they're going to be therapy today <laughs> like, every night. everybody's like does this stuff bother you i'm like no no actually i'm great get to hang out with my friends we laugh we have a few laughs it's some bad shit sleep like a baby mm-hmm uh, Mikey Gosler said, uh, Drinker, they just announced a release date for the Blu-ray of Jurassic World Dominion, and it comes with an extended edition with an extra 14 minutes. Oh, uh, no, really? Christmas. <laughs> that's that's something, by the way. I've seen, like, nobody talking about how great it was to see the original trio back. To get, You know, like, are we running out of that? Is that running out of steam, like, as a thing to announce? Like, the yeah, originals Drinker, are back. Your boy was back in there, man. I thought you'd be all excited about that, and you weren't. I watched your video. It was just like, how to waste these these. Well, I was going to say three great actors, two of them at least. Um, <laughs> yeah, just and they, it's like they brought them in at the eleventh hour, and the writers had no clue that they were going to be in it, and so they had to scrabble to try and give them a plot and give them something to do. Because I swear, like Alan Grant just spends the entire movie standing around looking confused by what's going on. Oh, great! He does nothing. Jeff Goldblum is just there to mock his his scenes from like the original movie. Like there's a bit where he, he's kind of got his shirt unbuttoned and like the one of the women kind of looks at him like, What are you doing, you pervy old man? And he's like, uh, kind of self-consciously buttons it up again. Just stuff like that. It's oh, just that's what I want to see. That's, was there a raptor that said to. Alan? That's all I need to know. I'm sorry there wasn't. You said it was a bad movie, <laughs> Jeremy. A bad <laughs> movie. <laughs> That's not going to be a bit. You, you remember Blue the Raptor? Yeah. <laughs> it's Owen's pet. And so it's got like a baby and it gets stolen. And it's all like Blue's all mad at Owen. And he's like, I'm going to get her back. I'm going to get her back. I promise. And the Raptor is just like, mm, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because that's what? what would happen. Uh, you can understand uh, fucking promises. <laughs> I don't so think they well. understand losing their baby. They're like giant birds. So then, no, they would just eat it or, you know, not Should care. have eaten him or... Do you remember in the first film, Blue betrays him, like, easily, and then unbetrays him. And it's like, okay, I don't understand, uh, really, but that's fine. That is such Hollywood logic. Let's make a pet dinosaur that we can identify. They're so cute. Like dog. Yeah. There's honestly hey. about like a dozen different plot lines going on in this movie and like they have no clue what they're supposed to focus in they don't know what's important what's like a side story or whatever and it's just stuff getting thrown at you constantly it's an People absolute saying it's worse than fallen kingdom and i was like what how fallen kingdom was awful 
I like how Drinker's well, like got Lindt out Burger super chatting him right now. So, <laughs> are they asking me what I want? For, asking, what do I you think of Ezra Miller? I want a double double animal style. That's what I want. Have you heard the newest about Ezra Miller? Going now, I know what I'm having for dinner. Then the newest thing about Ezra Miller is there's like um some kind of ranch. And guns and kids. Yes, and kids. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm curious if Zack Snyder is uh, still affiliated with <laughs> President Miller. I'm curious <laughs> about that. that. Dude, it's a fucking <laughs> Section Eight, man. Yeah, oh. he's he's insane, man. Like it's crazy. Uh, it's like between him and Amber Heard, like they, they're <laughs> like, just they're teaming up to sink Warner Brothers. <laughs> like, <laughs> Dude, you want you want like a, a lower level person to pitch the idea to Warner Brothers? Like, what about a Flash Mirror movie? That could w-. they're like, get out, <laughs> just get out right now. Oh man, what a disaster! Um, but I, I was curious. So, okay, so the second Jurassic World movie is Fallen Kingdom, correct? Yeah. And then now this is Dominion. What's worse? Because I've seen Fallen Kingdom. My God, it was I've been awful. I've been What's told worse, Fallen though? Kingdom is now the better of the two uh, which i find very hard to believe i thought fallen kingdom was a fucking disaster wow that's yeah, yeah. I, I think if i've learned to... wait, who directed fallen kingdom i'm trying oh, to remember trevor o'connor trevor nah, no, no. i thought trevor wrote it Boy, but he didn't direct aj it. boy boyena right the guy's directing the first two bayona the first two episodes of the rings of power oh yep is he well? Yeah. He's right. He's not writing, right? Because I don't remember writing, hating the direction well, of Fallen Kingdom. We don't know who the writers are anymore because they were they had like a couple of Breaking Bad writers and a bunch of bad reboot writers, and some of them got fired. Mm-hmm. And now they rehired some Star Trek Discovery writers, so uh, it'll suck. Big balls Big or little ones balls. depends on how you look at it. Guys, you remember the first Jurassic Park movie was real neat. Why couldn't that just be all I could say? The for Steven that Spielberg one. Yeah, it's pretty neat. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty cool movie. That was like a hundred years ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> I still, I really, li- I really enjoy Jurassic Park three because at least it's on an island. At least it's isolated. Dude. At least there's not fucking buildings and you know semi trucks driving around with kids in the streets. Yeah, the fucking second dinosaurs. one, dude. That was San Diego. Oh, the, yeah. the um, Jurassic Park three is what fan service movies used to be. It's like we're going to put Alan Grant with a Spinosaurus on an island. Yeah, isn't that isn't that neat? And and the fans are like, yeah, okay, yeah. And then you know you get your <laughs> you get your normal ass movie as a result of that. These days, fan service is like, look, it's Liam Neeson as Qui Gon Jinn. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. For five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, and Star Wars fans go crazy. Oh yeah. And Obi yeah. says hello there and oh. people have an orgasm. You know? ATST ATST hey, they played um they played the Imperial March finally which finally. wasn't awkward as fuck. It uh, felt like the show remembered his theme. <laughs> like, they were yeah. like, oh shit, right, it's this one. I'm uh, for my review, I need to get some footage of like seals at aquariums just clapping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, <sighs> J.S. Pena says, I officially turned 21 on Tuesday, Mother Truckers. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Um, Happy early birthday. Pena says, only positives I have for Dominion is that it didn't kill off the original cast. That is true. That is and an achievement in this day and age. Congratulations. Yeah. It, I don't know, man. It's, it's just rare it's that you get that these sad. days. It's sad that Jurassic Park is where it's at because I'm not sure we're ever going to get a, another good Jurassic Park movie. There's, there's no only one. There's no. There's no. There's there's one. What you can do with it. They don't know what yeah, to do with it. I feel like uh, if we even a... we'd come up with something, but like they always I, well, I, drink it. It's about locusts, right? Well, Jurassic <laughs> World was a good idea on premise, though. The premise of Jurassic World, I think, is great. Well, the functioning park but, going but, to shit sort of thing. Well, just having a having that park, you know what I mean? Like that's a cool I, I like concept. That. I yeah, fucking that, hate that, the Indominus Rex. That was all bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it it fell apart fairly quickly, and I ended up not yeah. really liking it at all. But I mean, the the idea of Jurassic World actually was pretty cool. You know, that, uh, it, it was nice. It functioned as just one of those what ifs, like, oh, what if Jurassic Park had actually gone yeah. into to production, and this is what it would have looked like. It's like kind of cool. 
Um, to answer your question more (laughs) it's about like 50 different things but yeah the locusts are meant to be like (laughs) the big existential threat that's going to end the human race it just sounded Um, funny from what it's all summed it up to me the locusts it's just treated as like it's a bit of a problem that we'll deal with later like they're eating all the world's crops basically and like everyone's just like nah uh, i don't know we'll we'll figure that out after what does that have to do with dinosaurs what shut up they're genetically <laughs> the response to that just there was the entire audience at the time. Yeah. Was, okay. what? Yeah. You know, uh, Jurassic World. I have a fond memory of that one because it was uh, I, I like when me and my sister used to watch a lot of movies, and uh, it would always be that she'd expect me to hate it because I was a lot more cynical about a lot more movies. With that one, I thought it was so awful that I just didn't say anything. And then by the end, she was like, "I liked that." And she looked at me, and I was just like, "Hmm, yeah." And then she was like. There was there was some problems, yeah. There was some problems with it, yeah, yeah. And then it took like ten minutes, but she talked herself into hating it. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, "Okay, actually, I didn't like." The, the, the. She was like, "Did you did you thought it was bad to do?" I was like, "Yeah, like it was terrible." <laughs> Gary, you'll you'll be pleased with uh, Dominion though, because it's got a girl who's the key to everything. Yeah. Thank uh, God. Yeah, oh. man, we Too haven't seen that in Hollywood at all. So that's great. Yeah. I'm assuming that's the same girl that was the key to everything in this in Fallen Kingdom, right? The, yeah, yeah. The one who released all of the dinosaurs onto an unsuspecting public because well, it's the you, right you know thing they, to do. You know how they retconned her her grandfather into it, like into the history of Jurassic World and stuff. It's like, oh, he, he was John Hammond's business partner and stuff. We just never knew about him. He was in the well, book it, drinker, so it totally makes sense. That's what loads of people told me. I was like, yeah, he wasn't in the fucking movie, was he? I don't know yeah. he's not in the movie, so. But then they go one step further, and then they retcon her mum into it, so that she was like this brilliant scientist who, oh, like, of course, because we need women in STEM. Project. Yeah. Yeah. Stop so. retconning! I beg you. You're really bad at it. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's a retcon of a retcon at this point. It's just fantastic. At this uh. point, just uh, you know, my answer for every broken franchise is just bring Tom Cruise and let him do Tom talk about Scientology and beat people up and run. You know, that'll yeah, be far yeah. more entertaining than what we got. So next Jurassic Park, Tom Cruise, baby. Let's you make it happen. Just, so, this also all the dinosaurs <laughs> in every suit. <laughs> They've got another super chat here from RRTNZ. He says, Hail Drinker and Team, enough Disney Star Wars shite. Fair enough. Uh, review a film <laughs> with Brawl, Boobs, Bars, Monster Trucks, Sam Elliott's Tash, and Swayze's awesome 1980s hair. It's time for a drink at Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Yeah. Roadhouse. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I like really Next of Kin, person. too. Next of Kin is one of my... It's got Liam Neeson in it. Hmm. Good one. Too. You ever There's seen a Next lot of power in uh, Sam Elliott's mustache. It's true. Yeah. It is. Yeah, a lot of authority in there. Um, Ghost in the Craig says, have you, any of you watched David Cronenberg's Crimes of the Future? Nope. I, I like David Cronenberg sometimes, and then I can't stand his shit like Crash. I fucking hate Crash. So... Uh, yeah, I like Dead Zone. Good. That's good. I like Dead Zone. He's an actor in uh, Nightbreed. That one's good. Mm. Crash? Bad. Crash. Terrible. Hate it. Ryan Gingrass says, uh, Hail Drinker, congrats on overtaking the quartering. What? Oh, like... Uh, oh, time for up? Jeremy to uh, make a, a channel. His uh, tan- channel is but... under attack. From the drinking. <laughs> From the drinking. <Yeah. laughs> Ah, oh, that's good stuff, though. Uh, Slack Attack says, The Fall of Numenor book edited by Brian Sibley is set to be released this November. What are the chances it won't have Amazon stink all over it? Will it be true to the professor? Keep up the good work, lads. Sibley is respectable. Um, and in, in the text that I read, that this was actually edited by Christopher Tolkien and he just finished it up. So uh, it's hard to say, though. I... Amazon has a lot of money that can make people do uh, things that would betray their better nature. So uh, it's a wait and see. It's a fall of Numenor. It could be cool. And if it really is, yeah, uh, edited by Christopher Tolkien, I'll, I'll, I'll buy it first day. I think, God, I hate to point this out. This sucks. It almost hurts a little bit. But OneRing.net pointed this out. This is the eighth book that J.R.R. Tolkien has produced, died in 1973, since... Um, George R. R. Martin released uh, A Dance with Dragons. So it's the eighth Lord of the Rings book. Jesus. 
since Dance of Dragons came out. I don't know. Yeah, it could have Amazon's taint on it. Like, you mean like um, the, the Amazon's Rings of Power covers being on Tolkien's work? That's taint. That's fucking taint. So, yeah, if the show name is on it, I consider that like pissing on it. Uh, I mean, it's Kirk being released. Kirk, guys, it sucks providing comments on these because only supers ever get read. Well, joke's on you because I just read out your comment. Ah. <laughs> also, I've been reading our comments all stream, liar. Oh. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, there's about 10,000 of them, so I can only show so many <laughs> any one time. I'd love to read every one of them out, but uh, they go they go too fast. Um, Unhinged says, my co-workers always know when I'm listening to the drinker because I'm walking around with a tent in my shorts. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, George Watkins says, what marks the difference between postmodern subversion versus well-written subversion? Hawk's arc in Cobra Kai and Jamie Lannister's arc in Game of Thrones. Good st- One's good storytelling, one isn't. Right? Yeah. And, and good <laughs> intent behind it as well, I would say. I, mean, I, I don't know how else to put it. Just uh, The shitty subversion is oftentimes just it assassinates characters or it completely fucks with things that are established. The true subversion that's really talented, creative, and impressive is the one that was like, oh shit, that was there the whole time. If I had just put this together and this, 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 I would have seen that, actually. Mm-hmm. That's pretty clever. You don't just pull it out of your ass. That's like the big clue that Ryan Johnson never got. Yeah, I mean, when it when it's about the subversion, it's not a good story. When the subversion is part of the story and makes it a good story, then it's just a good story. See, so you know, going out to subvert expectations with Luke Skywalker was a, a decision based on agenda, based on the message. Uh, Ned Stark losing his head at the end of the first, uh, you know, book. Sorry, spoilers. Uh, was was part of the story. It was it was a good part of the story. You know. Yeah, in the first one, all the characters act like themselves and their own personalities mm-hmm. and those decisions, whereas the other one has an end goal that it wants to reach, and it just makes, like, forces everyone along the path to that conclusion. You can feel it, Like yeah. breaking Obi-Wan so he's just an emo in a cave, yep. when there's no signs of that at all, and they, but they needed it to happen, so they did it. Well, you can tell it's not a creative decision. Like, a, a good creative decision would have, well, would have not had Obi-Wan going to get Leia. It would have been him protecting luke skywalker somehow you could definitely make darth vader part of the story but they do not meet that would be a good creative a good creative decision with thor would be thor versus gore the god butcher that's it without female thor and king valkyrie because the same amount of people would go see that than this that they're putting out it'd probably even do better uh but these aren't about creative decisions yeah um Krusty Juggler says, just watched everything everywhere all at once. The writing in that movie blew me away and had me in tears. How do you think it compares to movies like Hot Fuzz and The Prestige? For me, it's right up there with the best of them. How about you guys? Really strong. I, I love that movie. I haven't seen it. Um, I've heard good things about it, though. Obviously, I love The Prestige. I love Prestige The Prestige. Is, Prestige is fantastic. And that yes. was kind of before Nolan became Nolan, you know, and, and a lot, my, uh, went under a lot of people's radar. It's such my a number movie. one movie, Prestige. Dude, David Bowie is Tesla. It doesn't get better. Yeah. It's your number one overall movie? Yeah, Prestige. Wow. It, really? it, about five or six years ago, it, it beat out T2, which had the, the throne right up until that point. Ooh. Um, yep. Yeah, because I, re- I rewatched it a couple of times and I was like, fuck me, this movie's impressive. Like, the script mm-hmm. blows me away when I think about it more and more and more. And it's a it's film, true. if you guys remember, it's told with three timelines at once. Yep. Uh, and all the beats match each of the timelines until they reach like the big payoffs and twists, which, again, subversions are in that film, but they're all peppered throughout the film. If you're looking for them, you'll yep. know what's going to happen. One yep. of the ones that, you know, I don't mean to spoil, but just the, um, the reveal of who Borden's uh, assistant is. Mm-hmm. that uh, loads of people just are like, what the fuck? I, I feel like I would have noticed. And then you will look at the film, you're like, you can notice. You can notice. Mm-hmm. They drop yeah, all the hints. A, it's, a fun, it's a phenomenal film, and it's got it all, you know, from scripting, acting, pacing, uh, you know, subversion. Great it's, it's got it's everything. Everything. Yeah, B- Bale and Jackman are both fantastic in it. Right in mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I like how the, the stupid shot was about fucking everywhere they ever all at once. <laughs> <laughs> I, I subverted the super I will. chat. I will. <laughs> we subverted it. Yeah, we'll see it. I no, yeah, I, I gotta I, see it. I gotta I check it out. It. Yeah, 
good shit. So really, really good, well earned payoffs in it, and and it plays with a lot of interesting ideas. I think I've always I've always found it interesting that that idea of uh, what might your life have been if you'd taken a different path, made a different mm-hmm. decision, been a different person. What could you have become? And I think uh, it's always a fun thing to play with. Um, I'll finish up with this one. Uh, Kevin O'Neill he says, "Hail Drinker!" In all the ups and downs of Marvel, I've never heard you mention Into the Spider Verse. If you haven't seen it, it's better than it looks and absolutely worth a watch. Cheers. Um, yeah, I enjoyed Into the Spider Verse. I, I only watched it once, but I, I've got no real negatives to it, as far as I'm aware. Like it, it was surprised me actually for being. A fairly mature movie considering it's like animated um yeah i liked yeah, it yeah i liked it i enjoyed it yeah i really liked it i thought it was awesome um i i need to re-watch it if i was to try and pick it apart like plot mechanics wise and stuff but i yeah I it's animated it. you know that's the way i see it i like <laughs> i liked it wow. yes i liked the miles morales movie i saw it with my kid <laughs> 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 but he wasn't Spider Man. I mean, the the man. bit of this in that statement. Spider Man. They needed Peter Parker. They needed a couple uh, Peter Parkers in. Yeah, Gary. Gary, what if Miles Morales was Spider Man? That would be. That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> ask Marvel because they don't call him Spider Man either. I'll say the same shit I said to my comic store when he came out. I'm like, I am perfectly fine with this character. I even like his costume. Give him a different name. Make him the Robin to Spider Man for like 20 years. And then have him go off on his own, like Nightwing or something like that. That would have been great. But no, they made him Black Spider Man. That's the problem. And he doesn't have his own. He's just getting um, repeated Peter Parker stories. That's the, that's Marvel's choice, not mine, not anybody here. It's Marvel's choice to be lazy with this character. I've seen it pointed out by the way, but I'm assuming you guys would have noticed the uh, the end of that film, Into the Spider Verse, or Into the Spider Verse. Sorry, um, the the way that they defeat Kingpin, or rather, with what's happening with him and his family. It's the uh, it's taken directly and put into what uh, multiverse of madness. The same, same way they defeat the bad guy. They, the family see them doing a mean thing. So it's, um, it's, it's strangely because I completely missed that. I saw some people saying like, "Isn't this literally the Into the Spider Verse payoff?" And I was like, "Oh shit, yeah, I guess it is." Um, hmm. obviously, way better executed in multiverse of madness. That film was just top notch. Yeah, yeah I thought it was great thing. that uh, yeah. the, the directors, oh, Phil Lord and uh, I'm forgetting the other guy's name, got fired by Kathleen Kennedy and won at one. Lord Miller, one, Lord and Miller, Lord Miller got won an Academy Award that that fucking yep. year. Well, that was yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. And on that note, I mean, Solo did lose money. I just want to point that out. Solo, Solo lost, lost money. money. I think you're right. It it Solo lost. Did. Ray Lowe's weird. weird. <laughs> Dude, that was that was a historic moment. It changed. That was the thing that spoke to Disney the most in terms of their plans for Star Wars. We'd be in a completely different world if Solo had made like twice the money it did. Mm-hmm. Yep. Imagine how many more Star Wars stories they would have rolled out. Dude, they may. We may very well be halfway through the new trilogy by now. Had that, yeah, actually worked out. It's true. God, I remember the first time I saw like the Rogue One teaser. I'm like. This is gonna be like saving Private Ryan Rogue One. This is gonna be amazing. <laughs> God, that's what, that's what Gareth Edwards wanted, right? Like he wanted yeah. it to be. And there is a Rogue One out there. We'll never get the Edwards cut. I wouldn't mind seeing that. I would release the Edwards cut. Yeah, I'll yeah. bring him on. I'll bring him on a stream, and he can disassociate with me and all. We'll do the whole song and dance. <laughs> as long as we get the cut. <laughs> It, it's weird now because Rogue One is like just one of those movies that nobody really even talks about anymore. Like Darth Vader scene. Yeah, that's it. I think I that's think pretty... that's the movie. If you consider all the movies and TV shows, people in a room, we're all shouting at all of them. Rogue One sits in the corner trying to avoid being looked at. It's like, yeah, you guys, I'm fine, yeah. right? I'm the cool one. And it's like, yeah. I, I it's so it's crazy because like as much as I was like if I was in the fool's gold I fell for the fool's gold of Disney Star Wars it, with Force Awakens just like I never really like I was fine with Rogue One I, I don't hate Rogue One I never really loved it I was always meh with it obviously the Vader scene is incredible and it ends really strong and I think the whole Battle of Scarif is cool but like I remember watching that movie and I. I it's just it's obvious that they were not going to cast a white male on the rebellion side they just weren't going to do it you know what i mean and it's just you know and like why why didn't krennic get a redemption arc you know you know i didn't got one in battlefront 2 uh you got uh reva getting one why didn't krennic get one because he didn't need one he was i did like krennic Krennic. i'm a big i'm a big fan of ben mendelson um but it's just 
he's a really good actor. He was um looking back, he was a fucking character. He was a uh, he was trying to rise through the ranks and get more respect and power in the empire. He had like an actual thing going on, you know? Yeah, he's the be- in my opinion, he's the best part of uh of Rogue One. Well, Him it's, uh, it's often said Disney Star Wars' best characters ever. It's like right at the top of the list is Krennic and K2SO, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, so yeah. yeah. Uh Rogue One gets that as an accolade, I guess. Wow. But yeah, it's just it's one of those films that's like uh, it's not offensive and I, I don't hate it, but like I never have a compelling reason to watch it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I'm happy for yeah. it to exist. I just don't really care about it. Yeah, yeah, nobody remembers what happens in Rogue One up until the third act. Yeah, it's like, true. It was plot. We are getting a Cassian Andor series, though. Woo-hoo. Yay! Finally. I was going to say, we've all been waiting so long. There, there's no movies on the horizon, is there? Like, no. there's not even really talk of... of... Uh, well, they, they bait in the, the Taika Waititi one, right? Waititi With one, With no right? title, no plot, nothing. Yeah, so that's the most yeah. we've got. <laughs> Pretty much. They already got a title. It's called uh, Star Wars, I'll Ruin Your Mythos, Baby. Yeah, that's what I heard. That's so. <laughs> you saw that image they put up from uh, from uh, Star Wars Celebration and the stuff they're coming out with, and it's 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 fucking pathetic. It is sad. There's there's two blank spots like Star Wars movie, whatever, and then there's the Taika Waititi one, which you can only tell by the way they designed the logo. They put Rogue Squadron up like they're actually going to produce it, which they're not going to do. And then there's a bunch of shit TV shows. It's it's dead, baby. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yes, Rook Squadron's been shelved, hasn't it? Which yeah. basically means it's been shit canned. Probably because Patty yeah, Jenkins yeah. didn't notice her character rape somebody in her last movie. <laughs> I, have a, I have a feeling that's done some significant damage to her career <laughs> prospects. Um, yeah, we may be looking at the same situation as the never, never quite cancelled uh, Johnson trilogy. <laughs> like, officially, a- never quite officially cancelled. Oh, Isn't so it weird funny. how they're building characters out now, though? Because before you'd used to you'd come out with a series, and if a character was good and it was picked up by the audience, that's the character you'd spin off to their own kind of series. So that's mm-hmm. why kind of Spike moved from Buffy over to Angel because he was a fan favorite. If he'd gone down, if the fans had hated him, he wouldn't have moved over. Whereas no, now they're coming out with Reaver or uh, the Rebel Captain, and they're the ones that they want to push, and they're determined they're going to do it, whether anyone likes it or not. Yep. Uh, and, uh, you no, know, nah, but that's wrong, this Rook. Look, what did they do? I mean, look at look at uh, Cara Dune. I mean, Cara Dune's a fan favorite in Disney. Fully, oh, that's right. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this Rook is right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I want the book of Wade. Honestly, <laughs> it's so much work I can't, dude. I can't fucking believe they put Wade's death into the previously for episode five. As if, like, <laughs> right? what the fuck does that have to do with anything? Like, yeah, he died. Why was he even there? I mean, <laughs> fuck. Again, like, maybe shoot a scene of Reva getting the information, connecting Bail Organa and Kenobi. No, let's have Reva throw a car battery at Wade and kill him. The character we just fucking met. Can you imagine if they so do a Morbius? Weird. And they seal like the memes and stuff and think he's really well liked. He's got to have his own show now. <laughs> Everyone loves Wade. <laughs> well, shit, we're getting a Reva show. I'd rather see a Wade show, to be honest with you. Yeah, the, I mean, you know, I'm selfish. Show... My my YouTube analytics say I should. We wait. We need a Reva show, so I'm looking forward to it. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah, they want to bury themselves. I am all for it. I can't wait. I'm, well, I mean, Marvel's is on my calendar, dude. I am who, counting uh... days to it like it's Christmas. Because I'll be watching Andor. Any of you for doing that? Nope. I don't think anybody's going to care by the time that rolls around. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably going to because my audience is going to want it. I'm interested by the... um, It feels like it's a different team, a production team and an attitude when making this one. So I just want to see at least one episode to see if it's noticeably different. When's it coming out? 31st of August. Uh, So it's right in the middle of uh, House of of Dragon, Rings of Power. You're getting Rings of Power and House of Dragons, audience. I will recommend you somewhere else if you want to go see (laughs) Andor. I was was about to say, like, yeah, expect 10,000 videos on Rings of Power as soon as that stuff's coming out, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. It's going to be crazy. Uh, I I probably will finish up with the Super Chats there because, like, there's no way I'm going to get through them all. So I'll just have to do a catch-up stream for that in a few days. Um, But, yeah, man, like, you guys been awesome tonight thank you to all of you for coming in tonight it's it's been great to hear you rant it's been great to have a laugh with you <laughs> and mostly the ranting <laughs> it's a good time man no nah, it's always a uh, yeah. pleasure to be here with you drinker always 
And uh, can't, it, man. can't wait to see you yeah, again in a few hours on yeah, Friday Night Tights tomorrow. Yeah. Three hours. We can go through it all again. We can do it all again. Yeah, that's right. For, if, if anyone's not already subscribed to all these guys, the links to their channels are in the description. So please, if you haven't subscribed to them already, please give them a, a follow because they, they produce awesome content and you're guaranteed to get uh, a lot of interesting stuff from them. Um, but yeah, like uh, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else to mention now. Um, any of you guys got anything coming up you want to make people aware of? Uh, just FNT tomorrow, obviously over on Nerdrotic. Uh, and then I know Disbrew didn't you just hit 35k? Uh, yeah, I think I did it either during the stream K, or so just before. Heck yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, buddy. It's, it's been That's a crazy awesome. ride since February, where wow, I was yeah. at 2.8. Yeah, yeah. You were at like 26k or something, or 27k the last time you were on open bar. So like, mm -hmm. well, yeah, when, 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 when I went on February, FNT, were, when uh, when um. Uh, Rings of Power started rolling. Where, where were you at? Like back in uh, February, when that trailer I, hit. It was, I think I was 2.8 when I started. Holy and then shit. I'd just gone over like three when the quarter inch shouted me out. And then I was like 14. And yep. since then, it's just never stopped. That's awesome. Yeah. Well you, done. You'll be so, at like before you know it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude. Once Springs of Power so, comes out, that's going to be a whole thing. Oh, like, I'm looking forward for, to that. For, for, <laughs> for anybody. Boss, you just need to give me time off. For for anybody uh that is, you know, that's got a channel out there, like Disbrew should be, you know, somebody you look to. So I mean, well, how many subs when me and you talked? What you at? Oh, uh, 36. 36 subs when I met Disbrew. Yeah. Uh when he angrily sent me a message. <laughs> He's like, oh, I got yeah, a I channel. I think I make good videos. Fuck it. You don't have to respond. <laughs> I don't know how you you sounded angry, but I, I wasn't angry. I, I was drunk, but I wasn't angry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd spent a load of time on the video, and then you release one, and it's got like two views, and like one of them's you. <laughs> it was like, I don't know what's gonna happen here. I did. I watched the stuff, and I was like, "God damn, he does make really good content." Why has he got a fucking squirrel as a profile picture? Who is this guy? <clears throat> and uh, what a loser! Here he is, and he's killing it, man. So yeah, this yeah. is great. So I'm really happy, really happy about it. To be fair, he does own punk Funko Pops back there, so I don't know. Uh, they're all true. Overwatch. <laughs> he's you think that Overwatch, is doesn't, is Overwatch doesn't have any merch? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I have the GI Joe Funko Pops. No, so I have the GI Joe Funkos. So I saw he can't come back on. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Thank you, Drinker, again, man. It's always a pleasure to have uh, to uh, be on with you. To uh, you know, and then having you on FNT tomorrow is gonna be great. So looking forward to it. Nah, I'm looking forward. Should be a good laugh, man. And uh, yeah, thank you to everyone in chat. Thank you for your, your awesome super chats. Like you've been super generous tonight. Uh, I think we were up at like twelve and a half k viewers at one point. So new record. So yay! Yay! And uh, yeah. yeah, my mods, like, thank you for doing the, the same awesome job that you guys always do. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Um, but yeah, I think that's all we've got for today. So we're going to go away now. Bye bye. <laughs>